the glory. But e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this grabbing faces. It's hard not to be arrogant when you're always right. Yeah. See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Letty the Great, with co-hosts and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our city. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Right here, $100 throw. Oh no! <laughs> I like it. Yes, indeed, Nitro is the glory, but E Buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 230 of the No Name RC Podcast. That's right, number 230. I'm your host, Keena White, a.k.a. Left to the Great. And yeah, just a little quick PMB recap. Actually, it's not quick. It was like an hour and 45 minutes. It was good. Uh, Lucas and I geek out on that. Uh, it's all about PMB. Uh, I thought it was cool to have Lucas on as a co-host because he was there as a vendor, as a spectator. He did not race, and he was able to see things and uh, get the 411 on a lot of things that I was not able to because, you know, yeah, we, we explain all of that. You know, I was... Uh, uh, commentating but anyway uh that's a quick synopsis of what goes on in this podcast uh but let's go uh, i have a few shout outs some thanks to say and a few race announcements coming up that we're going to go through real quick we do not have any high uh high tech rc news or anything like that we will be back to a regular scheduled podcast next week we'll have the arrogant one the professor of everything in her answering your questions as well as you know pissing people off uh, but I would like to say thank you to all of the NNRC squad uh, around the world. It was awesome at Psycho Nitro Blast. I met so many new people. I'll talk about that in a bit. But thank you uh, to everybody around the world that tuned in on, on the online and watched and joined us. It was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. Shout out to the NNRC patrons. Thank you guys for everything. I am definitely doing a patron only podcast after Easter. Uh, it is Good Friday as I am recording this. So happy Easter to everybody if you celebrate it. Uh, it's a big holiday here in the DR. My family and everybody were chilling out for the weekend, but I'm back on the grind on Monday because lots of I'm, I've got I'm, I've got pre recorded podcasts. I've got lots of lots to drop her. Uh, but thank you to all the patrons of the No Name RC Podcast. Truly, without you guys' support, I cannot do this. Uh, you guys help helps me out a lot here and has helped me be able to do this for the last four years. So thank you to the patrons of the NNRC and the YouTube membership. Uh, if you wish to be a patron or a YouTube member, the links for that are in the written description of this podcast. All right. Also, we have some awesome companies that have supported the NNRC for a long time. Uh, just, you know, we can't do without these guys either. Uh, showing the sponsors some love shows the podcast some love. Uh, if you're a company, you like what we're doing, you want to be a part of this, hit me up. We have tiers for everybody. They are InvisibleSpeed.net, High Tech RC, Some Pedal USA, Sidewinder Fuel, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Clinic RC, Ignite Design RC, Bring Gas Tracks Back, Racecraft USA, Get Pitted with the Command Module, uh, WRC, shout out to Dan Danny Paz, just helping me out with all my artwork and all that stuff. You know, him and I work very well. Connie Spencer at the House of RC, RCGP, Call RC, we got some products here. We have a and we have a coupon code for that. Shout out to Heath for sending me some stuff out here. And shout out to our drivers, David Runafalk, Jared Tebow, Robert Battier, and Alex Hagberg. Uh, David is actually at the E Montpellier E Buggy race this weekend. All right. Uh just like I said, a few shout outs before I go on and I whatnot. And then Mac um Maxi. I'm so used to have a Max on my mind that it's actually Lucas. Uh, but shout out to my good buddy, Mike Norris. It was his birthday yesterday. Uh, him and his wife and everybody up there in New Mexico in Albuquerque are getting their arc war race to get, track together. So I wish them all the best. Um, and I just need to really shout out to a few people that I met. I know I can't say everybody's name that I met at PNB. I will be honest, man. It was really, uh, I still got blown away by about the, about the amount of people that listen to 
what we do here on the podcast and it's really always great to go see my extended RC family. You know, I know a lot of people in the Southeast, but this this time when I was able to get out, because there were a lot of new people at uh at the PMB, a lot of new people came up and introduced themselves, saying, Man, I listen to the podcast, thank you for everything you do. I listen to a lot of ranch, you know. Some people tell me what they like, they don't like. It, it, it's but everybody's just happy, like you know what I mean, and they, and they showed me a lot of love. I met a lot of people. Um, uh, saw some people that I met at like the ten scale races that I, I know now, and like every time I go to one of these races and meet new people, it just really extends my RC family even more. Like I always say, I'm truly blessed. I'm re- I'm blessed of relationship, richer relationships. So, uh, you know, to be around this element uh, was definitely uh, what I needed. It helped me out. And uh, yeah, before I go on, I want to say thank you to uh, Brandon Rudy, Live RC, Scotty, and everybody there that uh, brought me out there. I talk how that happened in, with Lucas. And also, I want to say thank you to Dave and his race time crew for having me there. As you guys know, uh, Dave and I haven't had the best relationship over the last couple of years, so it was good to go there, uh, talk to him. He, we, we had a great talk. Uh, you know, we have a mutual respect for each other. So, you know, and also... Uh, I say it with Lucas sometimes, you know, we always say we got to work with each other. So this is my way of working with him. And I think he went all out on the media this year. He he had Danny up there. He had Jacob. He had live a full crew of Live RC. So Live RC did a good job. They had like two cameras going, moving cameras. They had static cams. They had two producers. They had Scotty they had me. Uh, so kudos to everybody. I think they've really pushed a lot of money and pu- and wanted to do a really great uh, broadcast. I, I believe it was good. People <laughs> that in the comments joined us and people watching at home, uh, I believe it was good. And yeah, it's always good to see and bring new new ideas and new faces to things like that. So I was truly, uh, it was truly an honor to work with Live RC and be at PMB. I needed it. It was good for the soul. And now, like, uh, for me, just having worked with two of the best in the industry with uh, really enjoying working with RC Racing TV and Nick Damon, and then working with Scotty and Live RC. And, of course, I've done a lot of work. I've done some work with Danny. Uh, I'm really enjoying the stream side of things. And, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm enjoying it. So thank you for that opportunity. And thank you to everybody out there that supports me because without you guys, I would never get these opportunities. So, yeah, when I get to these races, I just like to go around and say hello, shake hands, and just see people and talk to my friends and meet new people. And I was able to do that. Uh, So some of these people I met were, I finally met Zach Donovan of Donovan RC. What's up, dude? This guy is like, he doesn't, he's, 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 he's. He came up and he shook my hand. He almost broke every bone in my uh, my hand. You know, that's that Brazilian jiu-jitsu that uh, Joe Zaire was talking about. But it was good to see him at a Nitro race. Uh, shout out to Zach Arsenault, uh, Josh Heiner, and all the Hillside crew up there in the Northeast. Toddy and the RC Excitement crew uh, met a lot of those guys at uh, Masters of Dirt. And they were here doing eight skills. Good to see. I uh, got to see the Carmendis, Marlo, uh, and Carter, DJ, um, all those uh, Southeast Star Wars, Donny, uh, Don Elliott, like I got to see Joker, David Olsen, all the all these guys that I have gotten to know growing up. I'm not growing up, but just coming to the Southeast um, racing, a, a big contingent of Can- Canadians uh, from Canada, Canada, as my buddy would say, got to meet them. Got to meet the young guy, Dylan Raposo, who I watch his Instagram and all stuff. He seems to be doing very well. Um, got to me see my buddy Robbie Smith and meet his family. He was there raising his son. I, I met Robbie at RCGP. We chat quite often. Good friend of mine. He's turned out. It was really good to see Drew Singer. Like I have not seen Drew for a long time. If you guys remember our call-ins, Drew always used to call in and have some of the wildest stories. So he's uh he was he took a, a little hiatus from RC. He got busy with real life in his real job. And he's back. He had this trailer all painted up. He had a truck all painted up. Nitro Pro was there. He was busy. You know, he had food. He had food. And, you know, if you guys know Drew, Drew's just good people. And he will give you everything. Like, he could say, hey, you want some food? You want this? You want that? And so we got to see him a bit. And um, he's like, man, we got to have a podcast. We got to have an after hours podcast, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, cool. He'll do it. So it was good to see Drew. Good to see B- B- Brent and Beach RC and Lucas, who was on her. Just all them guys. Got to see all my Mayako mates, Tony Scarcella, Jason, uh, meet uh, Mike Hess and those guys. Um, good to see Tebow and Graham again. 
and just you know, it was it was a great vibe there. It was a great vibe. I talk about this with uh, with Lucas. Also, shout out to the Bermuda crew. It was good to see these guys. So about five Bermudians made the trip. Uh, one of them, Quincy Aberdeen, is my arch nemesis for many years, but my good friend. Thank you, a- Aberdeen, for not almost cutting my finger off at dinner like you did last time when you was cutting my steak and almost stabbing me in my leg later on that night. I don't know, man. We have friends like that. You don't need enemies. Thank you for not bringing me a bottle of rum or even a dark and stormy. Not even a sniff. Thank you, Abba. But congratulations on your on your podium. And Ryan and Jonathan making their respected top five. It was good to see some Bermudians, Bird, George, and um, those guys, because it's always good to see my my people from Bermuda be able to talk in my full Bermudian accent and... um. Like, just joke around about stuff that only we guys understand and we can understand. So it's always good to see them, and uh, they always come to this race, so that's that's good, too. Uh, if I missed somebody, I do apologize. If I missed anybody's birthday, um, it's been a short week. I apologize. I did not get out and about as much as I want to when, I, when you work in the booth. If I missed you at, at PMB, I do apologize. Hopefully, I'll see you at the next race. And uh, thank you once again, Dave, Bobby, Lowercy. I had a blast. It was good was good uh in some not so good news uh i got this message on the way to the race it was sad to me uh but uh uh, rest in peace to adam simmons i believe that's how you say his name uh he is a he is a uh, a racer in texas i believe he raced up in um at mike's and earlier i think maybe late last year i kind of was told about his condition and uh, how he was going through chemo with cancer, and he I, apparently he must have listened to the podcast, and his friends asked me to give him a shout out to raise his spirits while he's going through chemo, and then we actually got talking over a couple of times, and he would message me once in a while, and we would talk while he's having chemo, and um, I hope you know I think he was listening to some of the podcasts while he's doing that, but uh, yeah, I, I unfortunately found out that he passed away and lost his battle with cancer. Uh, and he lost it, I believe, Friday morning as I drove. We drove up to to PMB, so it was very, very sad to hear that. And um, yeah, I think like anybody, we lose. Like I always say this: when we lose somebody in our RC family, I think it hits us all. So, uh, my condolences to his family. My condolences to the Mike's Hobbies crew there in Texas. And um, yeah, I, I thought it was fitting that. Uh, Brandon Road, who also works at Mike's, got a third place at this race, and I'm sure that Adam would have liked that a lot. So our condolences go out to him and uh, the Texas community, RC community. It's always sad when we see something like that. All right. Uh, you know what? We have some race announcements coming up. Uh, I am uh, Good news. I am actually going to this race now, it looks like. I'll be booking flights next week. I'm going to do my NNRC stuff as well as uh, some stream stuff for the International Buggy Challenge being held May 12th to 14th in Barcelos, Portugal. That's right, the International Buggy Challenge in Barcelos, Portugal, 2023. Uh, I'll be going out to that. I believe all the top names in Europe. It is the weekend after Silver State. I am looking forward to going to Portugal. I've heard nothing but good things about the food. So I'm excited about that. But to go to this track, I think the Euros was this last year. Um, we're a runner folk one. It's a glue track. It's different. I can't wait. So looking forward to that. Uh, some race announcements. It's a lot of racing going on. Over the next three months, it's incredible. Uh, it's like every weekend there has some racing. This weekend we have the Easter GP with my buddy uh, uh, Chris Lovell down there at Brookthorpe RC. RC Racing TV is going to do the coverage. I know that's struggling with a little bit of rain right now. Whew, that's too bad. Uh, but they ha- they are going to have like full coverage with people going there. A couple of my friends are going there, and I hope everything goes well for them. We have the Montpellier GP electric version going on this weekend in France. Uh, Rana Falk is there, and a couple of other guys. Uh, coming up, my good friend uh, Justin Wildy of his work series 
has his series coming up. Entries are open up for that. Registration for the Carpet Nets finishes today. Talking to Clayton. That is actually next weekend. Uh, that is yeah, more entries than the Royal Lasher. So that's good to see. This race is growing. It took a little while to get there. Uh, also coming up next weekend is Lance's uh, Mont- oh, sorry, Montpellier. Mills Pond, Florida RC Championships, which sold out in 30 minutes and broke RC sign up. Thank you, Lance McDonald, for breaking RC sign up. It was good to see Lance as well at PMB. Um, Badlands is having their spring sting coming up, I think, the weekend after. North Georgia shootout is the, t- the second to last weekend, I want to say, of. April or is it the last no it's the last weekend of April as well as the NXT warm up in Denmark I believe um that Ron Fuck is going that to that we have the Philippine Masters coming up as well uh that will be the first weekend of May that's coming up I think that's the date this is actually the first date of the Asian Buggy Challenge Asia Buggy Challenge which I actually have my buddy Zach and Ben who are are involved in this and um they, I will have, I have a, I have a podcast coming out just for like Australia that we recorded. It's mostly for the Australian guys. If you want to listen in, it's cool. I catch up with Zach and Ben Panic, and uh, we, they tell us about this race. So the Philippine Masters, then it's a race game. It's a series going to uh, their home track in Australia. So that's coming up. That's going to have full coverage. Scotty's going to be there. there. He's got his team down there, so we'll be able to watch that. We have Nats warm up coming up. Uh, we have Silver State coming up. And we have, of course, IBC coming up. And then we ain't even talking about after that. We got uh, Visions Race, NXT Race, Euros, E-Euros, woof, N- Nationals, Dark Nationals. Oh, we got so much race. It's so much racing coming up. It's crazy. Wicked Weekend. All this racing is coming up. And I heard there's more races coming. So, woof, it is going to be busy out there. Woof, lots and lots and lots of racing. Lots of racing. All right, guys, uh, enough jibber jabber. I think uh, it's time to go in with the with Lucas. This is my first time kind of doing a race recap with Lucas. I thought it was pretty good. He was funny. Like I said, he told me stuff in this that I had no idea that happened. So uh, it was good. He had some definitely had some inside scoops. Uh, this is brought to you by Invisible Speed as well as Techno RC. Uh, and high tech RC, thank you for all their support. High tech, uh, being as this is an unconventional just recap podcast, uh, I want to thank all the sponsors for their support for bringing this to you. And I uh, remember the invisible speed.net uh course is going on. This does not include the 20% that says in this video, but JQ needs to make a new one and he has yet to make a new one, so uh, it's all his fault. Thank you to Invisible Speed. You guys can sign up at Invisible Speed. Done that. We have links for this in the written description as well. Also, thank you to Techno RC for their continued support. Had a very great conversation with Matt at uh, PMB as we always do. Thank you to Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC. Techno RC is a premium manufacturer specializing in 8th and 10th scale high performance off-road RC buggies and trucks. Visit www.technorc.com for a complete catalog of their products. Techno RC, excellence in engineering. Hashtag Techno Takeover. Uh, what's up, everybody? A little bit different of a recap this weekend uh, for PMB. It's Easter weekend. It's kind of chilling. It's Thursday as we're doing this. Yeah, I'm having a beer too because it's Easter holiday and it's kind of a big deal here in the DR. And uh, I had a really good weekend this past weekend. I got to see this dude, which is Lucas Lauren. If you guys don't know him, he is uh, does some excellent videos. He does. He works for Beach RC. 
He does his, he did vlogs. He's always traveling in the, in, if you guys don't know, we've he's been on the podcast a few times. This is my boy. He loves RC and he was at the race with me. Well, he was at the race as I a different thing. I pretty much won everything. Yeah, but you didn't race. I, I won it all. But, but I was automatic winner. So right. everyone was competing for a second in everything. Well, you, you went as a vendor and spectator this year, not racing. Right. Did you do any video? I started, and then I lost interest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that goes. I know how that goes. <laughs> um, And you was probably busy as well. I was busy. That's the thing. I was busy. I didn't have time to follow any stories. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not really feeling the vlogs right now. You know, like, I don't know. I go back and I watch some of my le- later vlogs and uh, just not, I'm not feeling it. So um, take a break. Yeah. I, in order for me to like to make a, something like a, a race oriented video, I want to do more documentary type stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't have time to follow any stories or, or anything. So I right, took pictures. You single, it's just you and Brent, right? Yeah. It's just me and Brent. And Brent, Brent didn't do shit, but <laughs> he, he there, raced. <laughs> dick around all damn weekend. I did all the work. He just sat there and didn't do anything. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I tried to start shooting video and about, I don't know, comes late Friday, maybe Saturday. I was just like, eh, I'm not doing it. <laughs> well, I mean, Brent's also earned a, a, a right to have a race, I think. I, I haven't seen yeah. him have, like, just race in a long time and not do anything else. I mean, I'm sure he did anything else. He's always on the move, shaking and baking. You know, yeah. that's Brent. Yeah. Well, um, his job at races is to, you know, kiss the babies and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Of course. He did a good job. Had a great weekend. Kiss the ultimate. wives, hug the babies, however that goes. You know, yeah. meet and he, greet. Well, ultimate had a great people. weekend. What about him? Ultimate. ultimate. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. You know? yep. A lot of people run ultimate. So mm-hmm. Dakota Fan <laughs> killed it. Who else was running ultimate? Uh, um, Seth and Dalen. Seth and Dalen. He was looking good out there. Um. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. S Fox looking pretty good. Brandon Rose. Woo. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're going to talk Brandon about Brandon Rose. I don't think Brandon Rose gets enough credit. I don't think so either. Well, I'll tell you what. He's had a lot of DNFs, right? And he probably should have, but he has been steadily making A mains for the last two years. And not finished, you know, when he doesn't have a DNF, he has finished in the Seven, I would say top 10 of those A mains because most A mains are more than 10 now. But uh, this weekend, impressive weekend for him. Uh, he was super happy. It's good to see him happy because I'm seeing him and he gets upset, and you can see the passion coming out in him when he has an issue. And I think, um, yeah, he's happy right now, and he's got a good, you know, his program seems to be good. I'm not saying that he wasn't fast previously, but I think, um, having that team around you has is helping him you know like a right around him is mm-hmm. definitely helping him De- and you know being the s-works a good car the s-works yep. is a good car yep s-works good brandon's looking really good joe's looking good um yep. s-works definitely a growing brand uh, but I, I was just thinking about brandon rose earlier um i don't know maybe today or yesterday but i was just thinking you know this guy's been making mains for a couple years now i don't even think he's out of high school yet he is. He's out now, I think. Is he, is he out of high school? Yes, yeah, like last year, I think, was his last year. Okay. So he, he's really young. He's like, what, 17, maybe 18? 18, years no, old. 18, 19, um, I would say. Like, just it just feels like people talk about him, but, he, you know, they don't really talk about him like, you know. They don't put got, him in the like, fight. They don't yeah, put him in the fight. They don't I know put what him you mean. in the fight. And he, you know, like, he's definitely in the fight now. He's been in the fight for a couple of years. And I just don't think he gets enough. Uh, RC love. Hopefully oh, he will after this race. Maybe he will. He will. He All right. Well, love, just not enough. Need to right, love but, Brandon Rose. Just a little bit more people. Well, Texas loves him. And that's like half of America. Yeah, you know? pretty much. Yeah. Or, or one quarter of America. I mean, Texas is so big. We'll give it that. Yeah. All right, but he had a great weekend and we're going to talk about that. Um, All right. So if you guys are going to, we're gonna, Lucas and I are going to recap the psycho nitro blast that, that took place this past weekend. A lot of you are probably shocked that I actually went to this race because I was quite content. I was quite prepared to watch the coverage at home. You know, that was my plan for this past weekend. But uh, 
<laughs> basically, so Brandon Rody kind of messaged me and she said, "Hey, I need to talk to you." And he shot me. A, you know, I call. He called me and he's like, "Hey, um, I, you know, I know you did commentating at the World and, you know, and RCGP and all that stuff. Would you be interested in commentating with Live RC?" And Scotty said, "Of course. Like, you know, the opportunity to work with them and work with Scotty." And he goes, "All right, how would you like to work this weekend?" And I'm just like, "What? What?" I'm like, "This is Tuesday night at 10. And I'm like, "You mean?" He's like, "Yeah, PMB." And I was like. You mean this weekend, like the PME 2023? Because, you know, like, you know, anyway. Um, And I said to him, I said, look, I will let me talk to my wife because my wife just kind of got a little business. Game. She got a little, a little bar, small little bar with like billions tables and all there. So she just got that open on the weekends and she had like some stuff planned. And I also said, I'll, I'll go. You know that Dave and I aren't on, we're not on the best terms going into this, right? And I said, I said, honestly, I said, I mean, I don't know if I'm, I mean, that's how I felt. I said, I don't know if I'm welcome there. If if Dave's all right with it, then cool. I'm coming. Like, definitely, well, I can do it. Well, what's the problem with you and Dave? Well, I think um, we've had our, so we, we had a chat. We kind of worked our differences out. And he, you know, he's been a little bit upset at some of the things that we've said Just on her. Because you're critical. Yes, and I understand on the that. podcast because it is a podcast, and you got to talk about stuff. If you just talked about flowers and roses all day, no one's going to care. You I got to be critical if you're going to give positive feedback. You got to do some negative feedback. It's part. It's part of the show. It's part. But I agree with you. Personal. I agree with you. It's not like you know we want to jab at Dave. Dave is the uh, golden standard of what to do indoor racing the row yeah he, he has the best indoor great racing. events he does it he does it well he's been doing it forever um but to be critical i mean you got to be critical because what else are we going to talk about <laughs> i know so i mean but i i looked at that as an opportunity for us to bury the hatchet have a chat and you know what uh he came and picked me up in the golf cart i think saturday and he, he took me for a tour we had a good chat and we talked about a lot of things and um you know, I can see that his, you know, he's very proud and passionate about his his what he has going on, sure and that's is. he should be because he has the best indoor races in America. You know, and I've literally, I remember, I've literally told him that. So I I feel that we have, you know, gotten past that. Um, and it was it was good to do that because honestly, I'm not trying to be. I I think, you know, Joseph always says this: we must all we must work together. Correct. We all need we need to work together. Well, we all need we need to work together, not only when it's just stuff that we want to work together with you on. So, mm-hmm. you know, everybody has, you know, you have to I think you have to come on and understand that these people do when you understand why people do things or the the logistics of things and how things go, and you see people like, yeah, I I, I understand that Dave and those guys, they put on these races, they they have to make money. I don't think they make a lot of money like everybody thinks they do, because they definitely spend out a lot of money. As they well, make it. Uh, but I think they do it. They they're proud of what they did. I think that also Dave has been one of the one of the promoters that has also when 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 we were critical on the podcast, he he made changes. Like he, he got trophies. He has tried the AMS format that is uh that that is capped and and it struggled. And I understand like if he wants to go back to the regular format because it seems like people don't want the capped stuff either. So I kind of I. I kind of turned over a new leaf in the new year, like after well, last year, sorry. And I'm just like, look, as long as people have fun, as long as I see good racing and I hope they have good coverage, that's all I care about. Uh, yes. I mean, if you look back a- two years and think about all the things you've talked about, race time entertainment, all the positive and negative. If you think of all the critical things you've said, from let's say as long as you've been doing your podcast since episode 10 let's just start there um dave has implemented a lot of things that you yes. have been critical of you yes. know he, he's done the trophies he's had more presentation to it he's brought in live coverage everything that has been critiqued well, not everything but a lot of the major things yeah A lot of things that we've been looking for as RC fans and people who don't make it to the event but would like to uh, watch or participate in somehow. Um, Dave has really stepped up, and he seems to step up every single year to do something new and different or to bring in some new technology. 
Um, the guy's always looking for something uh, new and fresh. But mm-hmm. I, I've listened to every podcast you've ever had. So I remember. I, I'm not quick to forget. I remember a lot of things. So I remember you guys, you know, talking about having more live coverage, uh, treating the things like bigger events, you know, um, and a lot of the things that you've critiqued him on, he has followed through with. Yes, I would agree there. And that's good to see. And I think he, he with this, this year, he threw no, like he went good, like big on the, on the, on the live, on the coverage. He had Jake up there who does his thing. Then he had Danny there who was doing his thing, which, you know, I, he was taking pictures. He's doing video and stuff like that. Then we had, obviously, we had Live RC with two cameramen plus the two producers and myself and Scotty. So this was a, a big production, you know? It's huge. I and mean, who, also, who else could you get there? Live RC <laughs> had the, 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 the camper there, like the trailer and the, the semi. Fancy trailer they just built up. Yeah, recently, that was cool right? to see. That was cool yeah. to see. So he went all out on that and kudos to him. Like, and um, yeah, I thought it was, I mean, you know, that's how I ended up there. So basically uh, I hopped on a flight uh, early. Uh, my wife took me to the airport early Thursday morning, hopped on a flight. It was too expensive to fly into Knoxville. Like it was really expensive and it was just hard flights. So I decided to fly into Charlotte to, you know, it's kind of like, I always like to fly into like hubs like that. Miami, Charlotte, stuff like that. And then there's Mike Hill was like, I was like, hey, I, my, I left Mike a text at like 9.30, quarter to 10 at night. And he's usually sleep at that time. So when I called him in the morning, he's like, I know exactly what you want. You want me to take some time off to come pick you up the airport and take you to PNB because, yeah, some for some reason, you're going to be going to PNB. You didn't know about this. And I already knew what you was texting me about. I said, but I never even told you that. He's like, I just know. like, And he was right. So he kind of, you know, Agreed to come take some time off from work, which was cool. And it was like part of this was like, I'm gonna hang out with my buddy, we're gonna drive up to to PMB. Uh, but you know, I kind of was flying to New York, missed my um missed my my connection, which was crazy because there was hundreds of people that missed their connections from various different flights in this day. And like Delta was just giving out pure hotels, vouchers and like the hotel I went to had just pure people that had missed their connections, but they got me on a flight the next day and I got to Charlotte and then Mike tr- kind of just picked me up in a sporty little Honda Civic, which I call the dragon. And we drove up to uh, white pines and we got there about four in the afternoon, you know, stopped to get some lunch and, you know, stuff like that. Enjoy the drive up, you know, uh, it's beautiful going up through those mountains. So that was fun. Got there. And it was just like, I think, I really needed this because I needed some race therapy, some nitro therapy, being around RC people therapy, because after DNC, I'm not going to lie. DNC was fine. I enjoyed it. I had a good time, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I have in previous years because of the weather. That's nothing to do with Joey. That's or whatever happened. That was just because of the weather, right? Can't do nothing about that. But I was really sick after DNC, and I was sick mm. for about three weeks after DNC. And a it lot was, of people were, yeah. And I it took me a while to recover. And by that time, and by the time, like it was rough. Like I still recorded, but it was rough. Like I wasn't sleeping well. Uh, you know, my asthma was really, really bad. I probably my wife is actually a little bit sick now, so she has like a mild case of pneumonia, but she's fine. Like she's not gonna die from it, I don't think. But she's she's like active and stuff. Uh. So she probably had what I had, but just being in that cold and all that stuff just messed with me, you know, not having the proper clothing and all that stuff. And it just kind of messed with me. So I was sick and I needed something. I was like, oh man, I was kind of beat up, you know? And then when I got that call, I was like, Ooh, like I got a jolt of adrenaline and I was like, let's go. So it was fun. I got there and, and I needed that. Like I needed to be around my extended RC family. And when I got there on that day, like I saw you and you saw Brent, and you know how it goes. Like you just start walking around. You, you end up talking to somebody for 10, 15 minutes each time. People come up just like, hey, let me hear it. Giving me beer. I was like, all right. So, you know, got to sit off and drink with them. So that that afternoon was great. I just walked around, um, kind of got to know everybody, uh, talked to the live RC guys, talked to Scotty, and, the, you know, we talked about some plans for what we was going to do. And then, um, yeah, I kind of just, we kind of went home, got a good meal. 
it got ready because I knew it was going to be long, a couple of long days and not not no real chilling out because you got to talk. But man, I was super happy to be there. And it was really good to see just old friends that I, I mean, I, I saw a lot. Of, I saw people last year, but it was good to see them again, like you and, you know, all the, the people from the Southeast, because there's a lot of people from the Southeast. But there was also quite a lot of new people at this event. Yes, I so, ran into a, a two or three like month, two month year or two month old racers, you know, like fresh off the boat. I just got into eight scale racing and I looked up Cycle Nitro and here we are. <laughs> really? Like, are you serious? Oh, absolutely. I had three different guys that came to the trailer that uh, were damn near three months or less new drivers. Wow. I'm like, this is where you choose to get your feet wet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, but it's 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 All crazy. Right, cool. Here, you need you, to buy this, 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 this. <laughs> oh man, it was it was definitely a buzz. I walked onto the horse stalls. You see how people had cleaned them out, and like people had made mm-hmm. the pit stations there. Uh the Bermuda guys were there. It was good to see them. I went and uh, you know, it's really good to go in there and talk in my full native slang and funny, like and. Not saying that you wouldn't, under, but it's just, you know, we have different pronunciations and stuff like mm-hmm. that, different humor. And, you know, I kind of talk, shoot the shit with those guys for a little bit. One guy in particular, Quincy Aberdeen, who didn't bring me any Bermuda rum. Thank you, mm. Quincy. Come but on, it was good yeah. to see them. And then, yeah, it was like, yeah, let's get going. It was practice. And I'll get ready for the next day. But I will say this. Let's talk about the track because we do have some notes. Let's talk about that track. So what did you think of the track when you first got there? Because you got there before me, and you saw a lot more of it than I did because you probably saw it from the inception. Uh, it looked really good. Um, uh, 100% different from last year. Last yes. year was a ginormous 10th scale track, one tenth scale. <laughs> um, I think they only had like maybe one double. Probably. Yeah, or one big jump anyways. Um, this year they had uh, uh, a nice, nice, flow rhythm well let's just call it flow um the big old jump that thing was ridiculous they were shooting cars 30 foot in the air i i I went out there and measured it had to be anywhere from 25 to 30 foot on a regular basis just to make that jump you had to be launching your car in the air 30 foot high um and then even when you downside even even if you hit it perfect, it was destroying cars because, you know, when we check our ride height, right, we drop that car from about six inches onto the table, check the ride height, check the shocks. Imagine dropping your car from a three-story building to check the ride height. <laughs> I don't care if you landed on a downslope or not. You're still dropping 30 foot from the air. It was ridiculous. I normally see broken pistons uh shock pistons i saw a lot once or twice a year once or twice just some random occurrence a a flaw in the in the piston or something something just really weird happened i saw at least six broken pistons in one day from different brands (laughs) different brands everything i saw Uh, that too those shocks were compressing so fast (laughs) The blow by and everything that just couldn't handle something had to give. So the plastic piston just got destroyed and a lot of people's shocks. But the triple, the triple was like an enormous. Yeah. It wasn't like a small triple. This was on any other track. That triple that they had on the front was like a big triple. Yeah, but compared to that leap of high. faith, compared to the leap of faith, it was nothing. Like no. it literally. So we're watching when we're watching these cars go up. So just so people know, at this race, I was not watching the track. I was in a booth watching the screen, right? So you just see the cars go up. You see them go boom. And then the funny thing is some of them that look like they're going to clear it, they don't. Mm-hmm. Some that don't look like they're going to clear it, do it. And then some you think they're fine, right? They jump it. And you just see them disappear. And you're like, okay, I'm expecting this guy to come around the corner because you don't see the backside of it. And I'm like, <laughs> did he wreck? Did he break? Did he what? Uh, I, I thought that was back to pmb roots yeah absolutely um and not too crazy it wasn't nope. too crazy nope got got the big wood ramp back so mm-hmm. you know pmb is known for the wood ramp got at least one of them in there and it, it definitely it, it sent you yeah that triple in front of the um driver's stand it was 
you had to send that thing. It's mm-hmm. not like you're sending it a long distance, but you had to put your car really high and then hit on the brakes and then come down on power just really to make the thing properly and, and you know, set your corner up for the, for the next move. Uh, yep. Yeah, it really tests you out. I really liked the concrete section. Me too. Because they always kind of do it in a in a corner. And, you know, that's fine, whatever, concrete, wherever. But this time it was in a straightaway. And it's just really cool how they, like, dipped down from the dirt into the concrete, went straight, and then had to get on the brakes really hard to dip back up into the dirt. It is, is uh, kind of pretty strategic how people had to approach it. I saw tons of different lines in that one straight section. Yeah, so that you, I'm glad you bring that up. So that section, you wouldn't think that a straight line like that would have so many different um, kind. lines, right? Yeah, but right. it did. So you had people that went down the middle, and the thing is, you had to slam brakes because it had it was it was like a, it, so on video, it doesn't look that high. But when I went on and walked in, it, it's it's like the down ramp is about a two feet. Yeah, and you it's it's about a foot and a half below the natural surface, and then going up to that. The, the bottom, it's it's not like a smooth transition. It's like, boom. So it was donkey yeah. flipping. If you hit brakes, you would flip. So what you saw was either guys go right down the middle, slam brakes, do it the safe way. But then you saw, I think Rivkin was the first person I saw doing this. He was going on. He was like 50-50 grinding that thing the entire way on. On the dirt. Right. So yeah, like, like half right, his so car. So you could break a little bit. Yes. Yep, totally. I saw that more towards the end. People were riding as close as they could to the pipe. So their tires could be in the dirt so they could set up the cor- the 180 turn a little bit better. But using the concrete section, you your car was sliding at the end of that before you hit the mm-hmm. dirt. So, yeah, there's a lot of ways you could approach it. I, I, I saw 10 different lines in that one straight section. Yeah, you wouldn't think it. And I think I think Rivkin was the first person I saw do the whole thing, like straight on. <laughs> then I saw an iteration where like full and the guys started going just, they will go at an angle and just go on the last quarter of it and slow them mm-hmm. on and just hook their cars around that 180 because it was a serious 180. And so and also I have to say, look, I am not the biggest fan of joker lanes because it's 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 hard to follow on a, on a race, right? But I have to say that I think with this joker lane not being as long maybe in other years, I think it was three to four seconds of safety if you did it perfectly, it allowed the racing to still be a little bit closer because you did it, but you can make up three to four seconds on the track at some point. But I think the hardest part of this track for everybody was that back section. That the off camber double, yes. off camber to the double. Yes. Yeah, the double. You everyone was overshooting it and big time chassis slapping. Mm-hmm. Even though it wasn't that big of a jump, you heard these cars. I sat. That was my section where I sat and. These cars would just slap the crap out of when they're <laughs> landing that thing, man. You hardly ever heard people actually downside and not hear their chassis just smack the crap out of it. Yeah, um, it was uh, difficult. Yeah. What are we looking at, at here? Oh, this is sort of the A main. I just have it up. We'll talk while we. Uh, so people that are at home That's can see I this. Yeah, yeah, I won this one. Yeah. People at home were watching the A main. This is the start of it. Um, if you're right listening there. to this, if you're listening to this on audio only, you can go to Live RC and check it. If you're a bonus lap member, but uh, yeah, that's where Rifkin just got completely screwed. <laughs> like, that was a mess. Probably, probably the worst start of the uh, whole entire weekend. That that section right there was very difficult for that people right in the there. beginning, and it's it was, so far away, right? Yeah. Yep. So and then they had an off camber going before you hit that double. There was this off camber, and people were like taking it kind of like a um. Like a dog leg, right? You know, mm-hmm. kind of choo, choo, choo. But when you saw the pros, they're taking it straight on using the off camber uh curve as a jump, jumping into that double. Oh yeah. It was it was, it was pretty cool. And then eventually, and it took them a while to figure that out. Right. I saw Dakota do it first, and then mm-hmm. and everyone kind of caught on to it. Did you see Dakota put a yellow wing on? Yes. Yes. I am for telling visual, you, for sight. Yes, it was so far away. And he had the stickers on the side. He doesn't always have the stickers on yep. the uh, side of his wing either. Nope. But I was shocked it, when he did that. It's hard to see in there, man. It's hard to see. It's a big it track. Um, the, I'm not sure if they actually upgraded the lighting this year. 
it, it kind of seems like they might have, but still, mm-hmm. there's just not enough lighting in there. Oh, that triple's um, huge. Jesus, that triple's that crazy. It's not even like it's that long. It's just you got to shoot your car to the top to get over. That's probably not but a 25 foot triple. Yes. All right. Um. So this is for viewers. This is the track. This is the Pro Nitro. This is the track after all the laps, too. I have to say that the track held up incredibly. It did. Best best it's ever held up. I've never seen a cycle track not blow out. It that was track incredible. hardly blew out anywhere. Like, I didn't see it really blow out anywhere. No. It had a few ruts and rivets, but nothing too serious. No, not at all. Nothing at all. This little section was very difficult. Brandon Rose is I one like of those drivers. He was one of those drivers who was able to get there, through there pretty fast. Mm-hmm. That was a this cool is, section. Yeah. Um. All right. So we we agreed that we liked the track. We thought it was cool. It made for some great racing. Even the bump up races were great. You know, people were coming from 18th and finish, and and I think my boy Javon he bumped like twice from Ooh. 18th. Mallory? Javon Mallory, yeah, like yeah, in yeah. uh in Truggy. I like that kid. Yeah, with his girlfriend fueling with a fuel bottle. <laughs> Yeah, there goes impressive. four seconds right there. <laughs> she was fast. She was fast, dude. She was All you fast. people with fuel bottles, get rid of them during Maine. She she, I will say this, though. The Leap of Faith did provide some entertainment. We saw a, an epic lipo fire after this. And um, If it wasn't for the Leap of Faith, we would have left that race <laughs> losing money. Did you think people really broke that much on it? Because it didn't seem like it during the, during the races. Yeah, people broke. People broke a lot on that track. Not really? not during the race. It was more during practice and probably midway through qualifying. Okay. Um, all right. So we might as well talk about that too. What did you think of that? Uh so obviously, um last year they had a bunch of entries, like a thousand and About over a thousand entries. Right. And then they had to cut that from two qualifiers to from, sorry, from three qualifiers to to two. Which caused a big kerfuffle which with people, which I understand, but I mean I also understand that you can only do so much within a day. And this year they announced that there will only be two qualifiers, which for me says, All right, you you put that option into people's you you not you put the option for people to come, basically. If you're gonna have two qualifiers, you know you're gonna have two qualifiers. I, obviously I think it cut down the entries. I think it was seven hundred and sixty nine entries. But I think that entry count to 800 is very comfortable for this race. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things to touch on there. So um, the entry-wise, it was like probably around 250 less um, than last year. Last year was an anomaly. It was mm-hmm. it was the first year that most of the country was out of COVID. We weren't yep. all scared and acting crazy. So people really wanted to get out. Um but they never hit a thousand. They never came came close to that in in all their time to run in this event. Um, they hit that. They hit it last year. But I think this is more of a of a of a normal psycho turnout. Okay. You know, like I mean, psycho usually is right on, right around the seven fifty. That's a very successful event. Once you hit that thousand point, you never want to look back. And you know, Dave probably was hoping to get, you know, closer to that thousand point. I was kind of expecting it, but you know, in, in reality, we were probably over, over expecting everything because mm-hmm. um, last year was just kind of a little different, you know? Um, so, you know, unfortunately for Dave, you know, that, that's probably a, a $25,000 difference. Very true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the, that's the, that's the difference between, a uh, thousand and, and seven hundred fifty, and if you're if you're planning as a businessman to hit that thousand point and investing, let's say ten thousand dollars in new electronics or whatever new feature he's going to add to the track, it, it probably is a nice kick in the balls when uh, you don't get it. You know, like that's that's a that's a hard hard thing to swallow. Yeah, um, but he looked comfortable. I yeah, think. I mean, yeah, sure. It's I not think like he the, failed. It's just, yeah, I think the general consensus that I got was that this is the entry count that they they're happy with eight hundred. Yeah, it's normal. But and, so advertising at 
two qualifiers. They probably advertise that there's going to be two qualifiers, expecting that yes. closer yes. to thousand yes. turnout. You know, yes, which may or may not have turned off a few people. I don't think it turned off two hundred and fifty people. Um, I just think you know maybe he lost twenty thirty entries um, because of the the two qualifier thing. But like from all the cycles I've been to, this was probably the most in my experience, the most laid back psycho. It did have that feeling. It, it did not feel like I was overstressed. Oh, not. I didn't feel like I wasn't rested enough. They even like after what Saturday qualifying, they shut down for what? Four or five hours. Just everyone let's just take or shoot. We were done by what? 11 12. o'clock, 12 no, o'clock. No, done by Saturday. 12. All right. Yeah. So they shut down for six hours, you know? And normally we're going nonstop. You're only mm-hmm. shutting down to do, you know, print, print the mains basically. So yeah, it was, you know, it was a, uh, it was kind of a, what cycle normally is with actually a more laid back atmosphere. In my yeah, I felt that too. Like, you know how a lot of people are just zombies by Sunday. I didn't, right. you know, there were, obviously there were zombies, but I think, like people, I I know people say, well, we could have done a third qualifier. Yeah, but we would have, I think, then people would have complained about us getting out of there at three o'clock in the morning. Everyone I talked to, they're like, I'm fine with only doing two qualifiers. I don't want to, everyone I asked, they're like, I don't want to qualify at 3.30 in the freaking morning. True. I believe, I understand that. They're like, we're cool with that. I mean, what's, what's one more qualifier going to do? For 98% of the people, nothing. <laughs> you know, you pretty well, much know where bump. you're at by two qualifiers. <laughs> people did bump. That was good. That's a good thing to have an 18 people. You can bump. Uh, all right. So, and then they had, they did practice a little different. They had the, uh, excuse me, they had the seating practice. Yes. At very, 11. Er, very early. So that kind of basically is your cutoff right there. Like, yeah. boom. I mean, I'm sure you can come, you can come enter after that. Yep. But I, I mean, basically that was them, their cutoff. They're cut off right there. We see Bandon Rose taking the Joker. He was just racing with uh, Mason Fuller. So I, I think people that came, they enjoyed themselves. I think the people that didn't want to come, didn't come. And I think that's just kind of how it is. If yeah. you want to go, you go. If you don't want to go, you don't go. And Cycle is kind, of, kind of like an event where <clears throat> not every RC enthusiast is going to make it their bucket list race each and every year. Once mm-hmm. you've experienced Cycle a couple times, you either love it or you're just like, all right, you know, I'll go to some other uh, race time event because cycle is just it's kind of crazy. There's nothing normal about this race. It's nothing that we <laughs> do on a regular basis. You know, us RC racers who, who race two, three times a month. There's nothing normal about this race. Um, but so for, you know, for some people, once they've been here once or twice, three times or, you know, every two or three years, some people just aren't going to come every year. It's just not that kind of race. I would agree with you, man. I, and like I said, it was comfortable. I think people enjoyed it. I think we'll see this. A lot of people that came this year come back next year. And it was a lot of people from all over America. And obviously, we had the Bermuda guys come. We had a contingent of Canadians that came. And um, it was it was pretty good. Like, I think that's the impression that I got. I really, you know, speaking of technology, I like the the banner across the yes. the driver stand with the TV stands, which Very is really cool. cool. Got um, a little critique for that though. Oh, um, okay. Well, go ahead. Okay. Well, um, I think it needs to kind of next year. I know they can do this. It, it, they should probably figure out how it all works this year. But next year, you know, like show um, some sort of ticker, like what place people are in, because there's mm-hmm. really unless we had our mm-hmm. phones in our hand. As 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 uh, spectators, uh, you, almost everyone had their phones in their hand on live right. RC looking at where people are and stuff like that. Um, so just maybe having a ticker top five or whatever, That's a good idea. just kind of scrolling through, it, just make it a little more useful because most of the entire weekend, it just basically advertised Psycho. It advertised Friday practice, Saturday qualifying uh Sunday mains it didn't have a whole lot going on on it, even though it did look cool. And um, the but that's a value that could be cool. used for to to bring value to it more than just advertising. Yeah, and you know, at, at Psycho or at race time events, there are spectators. Now, whether we're part of the RC community or not, there are always people in the stands watching the race. So, um, ways for us to um, 
be able to watch a race a little better. When I'm looking at my phone, I'm not looking at the race. I really want to look at the race and just kind of glance over real quick, see, see, you know, wh- what places are, and then go back to actually what, you know, the physical race. Um, but sometimes I find myself staring at the phone and I watch what's going on in the dirt. Oh, wow. just looking at Fen getting it wrong over that tabletop. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was all right. We'll go. All right. So let's, 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 all right. So we geeked out on that. Let's talk about something right here that you and I started talking about prior to this was competition. competition um, great. The, I think we're seeing the changing of the guard somewhat, not just on a pro level, because it's still a little bit ways to go, but I, I mean, let's stop this. Let's go through. Um, let's stop that for a minute. Let's go through some of these podiums here and look at them. Uh, because a lot of these people, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's been a while. And a lot of them, I'm not sure who they are. You know what I mean? So, um, not saying I know who they are, but but just new pit faces. Like, I, I used to know the... the um, this scene very well, you know, when I used to go to these races and come to the South, obviously I have not been traveling there as much in recent years, but, uh, or have been, this is my first race, big race in the South for a very long time. So big, big, big race, you know, and my first psycho since 2019, because I've been to two, uh, do I want to share that? Am I sharing the, no, I'm sharing the wrong thing? So some of these podiums, you know, I, I don't know who these people are, but it seems like we have a lot more younger drivers um podiuming and people that used to make these a mains and intermediate because intermediate at this race is is extremely stacked you know it's yeah. uh very stacked so to see some new faces there is very good see some younger faces too we actually so here we have intermediate we have- nitro truggy this this kid uh ah oh, man let me bring up his name here uh, I remember his name because I interviewed him. He actually went home with two of those trophies. He's like, yeah, we got to make some room. When he first got it, he's like, yeah, we got to make some room in the car for this one. Then he won another one. I was like, wow, I don't know what you're going to do, but you got to make room for this one too. Well, we were so, actually having a conversation at the race, me and Brent. And um, I think somebody else might have been involved. I can't remember. But uh, we were talking about So typically at bigger races, your your regional or local pro – drops down to intermediate your intermediate driver drops down to sports everyone tends to like just drop down a class except for your your paid professional pros not everyone but a lot of people this something we uh paid attention to on this particular race was okay well first off my point is a lot of times there's some people at the top the intermediate class that need to be at the bottom of the pro class because that's just what they've kind of graduated to this race in particular seemed like the intermediate class, everyone in the intermediate class belonged there, you know? Yes. Like, yes. I didn't see anyone in intermediate um, in, in nitro buggy, truggy, electric that didn't really belong there. So it was it was really cool, and you could tell because that competition in the A mains of intermediate um, was fantastic. You know, like, your, your regular names just weren't there in winning. It was like a bunch of other people um, yeah like like this kid mason herrick that's who mason this is right herrick. never heard of him in my life but yeah, but he's got two big PMB trophies spanked him put yeah. the spank down you know the only person that i really know i know cody i don't know cody ingham but i know who he is I and then of course him. david carmendi i know these are two south races but yeah david carmendi oh man you know i got this real interesting thing should i save it till the end or no, we can Do save I it to the now. end. Let's okay. save it to the end. Perfect. But I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. We have like Don Elliott, uh, Chris Morant, who was probably the fastest guy here, but he had some bad luck. Morant, I think. Well, he was yeah. the uh, WRC guy, right? Yes. Hey, speaking of WRC, impressive to see that brand starting to grow. It's Saw a uh, nice little group of them out there, you know? Yep. Matt, like, the owner, Matt, uh, well, not the owner of, owner of Sanded RC, who, uh, who is the distributor? Nice guy. We've had many conversations. It was good to finally meet him. What's his name? Matt Kennedy. Matt Kennedy. Yes. And um just seeing that reminds me of like old JQ racing days. They're totally JQ. WRC yeah. is a new JQ without the fucking JQ. <laughs> yeah, like you know, like boots to the 
<laughs> boots to the ground, like just out there grinding it out, uh, you know, with Morant as the team manager, and they got Dylan Cadwell as well as the manager. And when I see that and I saw that little camp there, I was like, This is a JQ team, bro. <laughs> no, I, I'm like, I know this grind and I and keep yep. it up, like you totally, hundred percent. No so doubt. that was good to see. Uh, but yeah, these we are seeing these these like a changing of the guard and sportsmen. We're starting to see it's it's good. I want to see more younger people like uh Mason Herrick doing well at these races and winning these type of races and being on the podium and whatnot. So let's go through some of these podiums we have. Uh of course there's Pro Nitro Buggy. Look, very I we'll we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. All right, here we go. Sportsman Nitro Buggy. Let's look at this. Younger. Who are these people? So this is. Oh, that's this is, Mark Samaria's kid right there, right? Mm, 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 mm. Is that correct? Number yes, three? that is. That's yep. him. That's Ev- him. Is that Evan? That is Evan. Right. Uh, I bet you Mark is super pumped about that because this young man bumped from like eighth, 14th. A bump for the B man started like. No, hold on. Am I, am I right? He started like 14th. Oh, he bumped to something, but he drove very well to get up to third and was in second at one point. Mm-hmm. And I love that he loves Nitro because Mark is all about e buggy. Yeah. And he's an this, guy. you know, and, and Evan likes Nitro. And then when, you know, when he was doing the interviews, you can see Mark was super. Now, Mark hit 100K this past yes, weekend on he YouTube. He sure did. But I bet you he was more pumped. He was as pumped about that, but I bet you he was more pumped about this too. He's seeing his son do well, and his son's turning into a legit little little racer, like you know what I mean. But well, he's not literally; he's taller than me. But you know what I mean. A legit, legit, a legit young racer with all these other, and that's uh, Scotty's mate, uh, LW4, who's from up trackside, who won that. Scotty was all excited; he dumped water on him and everything after the race. So it's good to see these young guys, and then of course we have this old fart right here. No, but that's my good friend Abba, who did every number wrong. five. Yeah, that's yeah. my Bermuda mate. He I made met the that podium. guy. He's really cool. Yeah, we used to, you know, that's like my, we used to race, we, we raced each other for years. We went, we've been away a few times together. And um, yeah, we just talk a lot of crap to each other. So um, let's see, who else? This was 40 plus E Buggy, which was Jack DJ Hapler. I got to meet uh, Ken Ran. I've always seen his name on there. Look at all um, these young, up and coming bucks. These look plus at this. 40 guys, dude, they got a lot of potential. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, we have Caden Fuller, who had a good weekend. Seth Van Dalen had a good weekend. We're going to get more into that. Cole Tollard. I didn't even know he finished fifth. Uh, another, Mason Herrick, intermediate e-buggy. There's uh, Zach Carr. Uh, Justin, I believe his name is. Chris Morant. Patrick Rossler. I don't know what he's doing right here. Rossler, he's having a good time. That's what he's doing. Yeah, he's he's in, in the zone. Hey, he uh, got trophy girl. Speaking of Patrick Rossiter, he won truck. I know a lot of people were talking about this on the internet. Right. Um, because they were like, he's professional, oh, he should be in pro. And, da, 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 da. Not and I'm a like, professional. I think I don't see Patrick, Patrick Rossiter as a professional. Is, is not a professional. He'll, he'll never be a professional, but he is a fantastic driver and he kicks butt in Truggy. That's kind of his specialty. Actually, E Truggy is probably his specialty. Patrick Roster is a is is a legitimate uh, intermediate driver. He's not a professional. He's not going to get paid to drive these cars. He does not belong in the pro class. If he wants to run it, that's his prerogative. But you know, this is he's the epitome of what an intermediate guy is. In my I opinion. agree with you. And he's running nitro. He hasn't run nitro for quite some time. And then there's Javon number three. There's he's Javon cool. and Who are these other people. Let me bring up this intermediate nitro buggy. I should have this up here in it. That's fine. Intermediate nitro buggy. So we have Patrick Ross, Cody Ingram, Javon Mallory, Braden Billington, Chris Morant. So that must be Braden Billington. Never heard of him to this race. No. Who's that guy? Yeah. New guy. Racing. Good to see. Love it. Love it. Love it. It's Let's awesome. go her. Sportsman e buggy. Look at this. This is. We, I, I really, I know that I'm, this is not. People are gonna like this, but <laughs> look, look at the uh, diversity going on here. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got mid, like young twenties, older, older, got ten, tall, got small, yeah. Big and I large. would rather see sportsmen be all of guys like this. To be honest, this is great. That's a total sportsman class. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, that that you know what that looks like a sportsman podium on any given That's day at any race. Sportsman in, in, in podium the right there. <laughs> Love and it. oh, pro nitro truggy. Ooh, 
Yeah. All right. Let's touch right. on let's touch on this winner. This winner guy here. Oh, so now everybody's seeing the light about the Fullers, eh? Mason Fuller. The Fullers, <laughs> I mean, been just grinding for mm-hmm. how long? Who even knows? Probably since like I bet they've been grinding for 10 years at least. Well, Mason said he's 17, maybe 18 now, but I would say in the last four years, they have been putting in a lot of work. Last oh, three. Those Fullers have been putting in work way before they were ever known. They've oh, yeah. been going hardcore for a long, as long as I can remember being in this hobby. I've been in this hobby for, I don't know, almost 10 years, I think. This was a very exciting race. Uh, so people might not see this, but Scotty and I were calling this race. And at one point, we was both up on our feet and arms were going. Like, that's how exciting this race was mm-hmm. for us up there. Like, we're up on our feet and he's doing this and his arms are good and all my arms are good. And, you know, we're up there like you would think we was out there like where people could see us. It was my favorite race of the weekend. I think it was one of the best. I think it was the best race of the weekend. It was Mason great. Fuller. This guy's been just chomping at the bit for a long time, man. I mean, you've been talking about mm-hmm. him for at least two years. You know, when are, when are these young guys going to take over this old guard? This old guard has just been dominating. When are these young guys going to step up? I think I think I, I almost I almost expected Mason Fuller to do the sweep of both. I thought Nitro it was going to happen. And Buggy. I thought it was going to um, happen. But Dakota was just on fire with Buggy. Mm-hmm. You weren't touching him with that thing. Um, but Mason Fuller, just straight stud mode. And he's just getting better. And his brother's getting better too. Yeah. They had a great race in E-Truggy. I mean, his brother was just racing like intermediate like last year, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he was focused on football. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we talk about old God, right? But I mean, everybody here is under 30. So uh, it's just that Dakota fans has been around a long time. Joe is probably the oldest, I would say. But great weekend for Seth. Uh, f- been a long time since I've seen Seth c- smiling, comfortable. He was smiling at DNC when he was going to run the Etrogi, but I talked to him and he seemed very, very calm and collective and happy. And it's been a while since I've seen him like that. And he had a great weekend. Maybe not the result he wanted in Nitro Buggy, I think. Mm, probably not. But he was fast all weekend in all his classes and he was super happy. Uh, yeah. Joe Bornhorse, always good in Truggy. Maybe not the fastest in Buggy this weekend, but. He's also just coming off being sick and, you know, probably taking a little break after not running no, no, no RC for a while. But mind you, he was doing a lot of RC. But what, what really, this young man here at the end, smiling, always good to see because he had one of the best weekends he's had in quite a long time. Or probably ever, I would say. Brandon which Rose. is Brandon Rose. But, yeah, man, the Iceman won this. And when he won this, and it dumb, like the way he drove this, I was like, I think he could do it. I think he can do it because he won e truggy He won this and he was fast. And I was just like, huh. But to be honest, he wasn't as fast as Brandon Rosen's Rifkin in qualifying because we went in Pro Nitro Buggy. We went, I haven't seen this for a while where we went Dakota Fan, Rifkin, Rose for one run, Dakota Fan, Rifkin, Rose for the next run in Pro Nitro Buggy. And those two were fast. Rifkin was very fast this weekend. Very fast. Yeah, Don't let his, his result fool you. He yeah, was very fast. He definitely had his moments. Like he definitely looked like he was he was fighting for it for a minute. Oh, we don't um, want to see that mostly picture. mostly in qualifying. Like he had his moments in qualifying, and then kind of just like I don't know, just kind of disappeared in the mains, didn't he? Well, he he got shuffled right back. Yeah, in sure the A main uh, in Nitro Buggy. This guy had a good weekend too. To be honest, he Who, won forty that- plus. That guy with the camera? Yeah, he had a great Or that guy with the beard? No, the guy right here, Adam Drake. He actually did well in the A-Main, too. (laughs) He did well in the A-Main. He um, dominated plus 40, didn't he? I mean, that's to be expected. (laughs) But, I mean, he... uh, he, Domination. he he did well in the A main too. Like he was he got a he had a solid weekend. I think um Drake had a solid weekend at PMB. Uh and it was yeah, I think he was solid. I mean obviously there was let's be honest, there's really nobody in 40 plus at this moment that can challenge Drake. Except me. All right. I mean I mean but that's why I'm not racing. There's no all one. Right. So no you're giving them a break. Yeah, They're exactly. giving them a break. I'm all giving, right, gotcha. Letting everyone catch up. 
Got I'll you. Be back. Got you. All right. All right. Um, so you agree Truggy Man was great. I enjoyed Bet. that. Uh yep. we, we thought it was the best race of the thinking it's the best race of the of the weekend, you would yep. say? Yeah, I'd say so. All right, oh, sportsman nitro truggy. Uh Josh Fine. Josh Fine. Yeah. He's a, he's a regional guy like Josh. I've seen yeah. actually I've seen Josh since like he came into the hobby probably about two, three years ago. Him and his son. His son's been really improving a lot. And uh Josh been grinding it out. He goes to just tons of local regional races, just goes and goes and goes. He wasn't even making regional or local eight mains for a while. Now he's putting himself on top of the top of the sportsman class is pretty sweet. It's yeah, like I got it's cool to watch these guys progress. Uh, progress, even though they're full grown men, you know, some middle aged guy <laughs> gets <laughs> but, into the hobby and works his way up. It's pretty cool. RC's I mean, what for sport everybody. can you do that in? You know, no other sport. This is Bermudian guy Jonathan Davis. He finished fifth, so I'm you know very happy to see my Bermudian guys doing well. Um, oh, 40 plus nitro buggy. There we go. There's Drake. There's Ever. I, I what's this gentleman name? Look, I, I can't who, remember his name. I don't know who that is. Dirty Don Elliott. This guy is the most hardcore racer out there. Yeah, Don Elliott, also a nice southeast racer. He uh, this guy races every weekend. If there's he, somewhere, he used to be really fast when he was younger. He really, was like he was one of those kids who probably are one of those guys that probably could have like gone pro, but most people don't want to pursue that. Um, mm. And then he just came back, you know, as a as a older guy. And he's he's a stud. I mean, when he's on his A game, no one's beating that guy around here. Yeah, he's good. He he is um he is if it's if it's a race going on, he'll be there. Yeah. Uh E Truggy race was excellent. Oh my gosh. Between these two, between uh Caden and and then and then Joe, these three put on a show in E Truggy. Um it was good to see. I know Toddy from up in uh RC excitement up there in Massachusetts. He was super pumped. Uh, they were making him do push ups. Like his boys were like, Come on, do some push ups. Pump up their chest. Let's go. Shout out to all the RC excitement guys. I met him at Masters of Dark. Why, why so, of all? I really like E Druggy because there is only one class of it. There's no sport. I think that's going to change the. No intermediate. Well, you know, I, I, you know what I think should change? Is I think we should just do that with all the freaking classes. <laughs> You, that's not going to qualifier happen, separate them out you know uh, yeah hey, give, i mean give a trophy to every freaking qualifier all the way down to the q main uh but i used know, to do that i think that some of the best times i've had in rc racing is when there's one class one nitro buggy class one truggy class one electric class you know like really it really brings out the best in, in racers, in my opinion, especially at the lower levels. I agree, but I, I just don't. This, this name, sorry, this gentleman's name, Lewis Chamberlain, by the way. You know what? I, I just don't see that. I, I agree with you fundamentally, but I don't see it happening. It's too. It's it's just. Nah, it's why just they not do the truggy? Why would why why with the e truggy? You know, still. Well, what, E Truggy, what's the biggest biggest class there? E Truggy, it was, it was <laughs> because they don't separate it. How cool would it be to just have a nitro buggy class? You know, just go sort yourselves out and you qualify where you qualify. You know, how cool is nationals? Nationals is awesome. Mm-hmm. There's one, there's two classes: nitro buggy, nitro truggy, and people are. They go there knowing, hey, we're going to end up where we end up. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> you That's know. why I like the Nationals. Yeah, you know, I really do. Really cool. Me personally, if I was to, they're like, hey, I want you to throw an event. No holds barred. Do what you ever you want to do. That's exactly what I would do. I would do one class for for everything. There would be one e-buggy class, one e truggy class, and one nitro buggy, one nitro. Truck. Well, you can still split it's it up, too. You well, that's the thing. What I would just... do after qualifying, I'd throw a wrench in the system and be like, all right, you guys have done separate yourselves out by qualifying. The, these uh, 35 people are in sportsmen. These 35 people are in intermediate. And these people are obviously are pro. You know who's in the pro class, mm-hmm. right? And then there you go. You're going to battle it out. But you don't tell them until after. <laughs> and since it's my race and I can do whatever the hell I want, 
That's exactly what I do. You said don't do it till they tell them that's after. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but I, I agree with you, but just, I don't see that happening. Um, no. Let's all right. Let's let's geek out on the pro class for a little bit, and then right. uh, we'll we'll talk about some other things. Uh, all right. So hey, I, once again, like Dakota Fen, man, he is right now probably the best RC car driver in the RC offered car driver in the world. Yeah, I mean, if you put it all together, sure. He Absolutely. he is very scale, instinct. scale yep. electric yep. carpet, dirt, whatever. All you put it all in one shot. Yeah, it's hard to compete with Dakota. Well, it's getting to it, the point where it's hard to compete against him at, at these races. Oh, yeah, he oh. ain't given day. If everything's going in his way, you're not touching him. Well, it's coming on to it's it's just been Mayfield and, and him. Mayfield was sick this weekend, by the way. So he uh burned himself up. Oh, that's what happened. He went and light a bunch of nitro fuel on fire inside of the can, and I guess he got burned up. <laughs> uh, hey, fuck around, find out. <laughs> really? That's what happened to him? I thought it was sick. I don't know. I'm just here now. I heard he got burned up because he was fucking around, and he found out. <laughs> I heard that, too, but not at this race. <laughs> not at this race. It was before he got here. He just came here. He, he, came, he came to uh, Psycho. Burn up. Oh, at least, okay, so, at least a little bit. I don't right, think nothing, he was like any. He did have to go to the hospital. Right, but, but any um, anything to do with your hands in this hobby in this I industry? Think it got his face, is what I heard. You oh, know, really? It, it definitely put like a little little burn on his body. Ouch! Yeah, hey, go that's light nitro bottles on fire and see what happens. Because <laughs> that, that stuff burns invisibly too. Yeah, nitro is not good. You don't want to get get that on you. <laughs> wow, I'm glad it's okay. I didn't realize it was that, but that would be why we didn't. That's see why him. I heard. Don't check my. Don't you know? I'm just some guy. I'm a fly in the corner on the wall, just paying attention to everyone else talk. So that that yeah, That's, I didn't hear that from him. I actually didn't even see him the whole entire weekend. Neither did I. I just saw him at the driver's <laughs> stand, and that was it. He he. So something was wrong with him, and I. If that was it, then I'm oof. just joking. Really, he just didn't want martial all weekend, so he made it up. No, he didn't look normal. I'm serious. The funny thing is, I somebody asked me that prior to coming to this race. What if he got burned up? Yeah, yeah, it was mild, but you know, it was enough to like to you know not make him normal. Well, you, know? you got to think. Yeah, obviously if he was not normal. Hands. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what he got. I heard he got but, his face though. That will be oh wow. Oof. Don't light shit on fire. I guess that's yeah. That's hey, the look, that story. Fuck around and find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh well, well that All will right. be he. He did not have a good weekend. I mean, he did finish uh, yeah. fourth. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm not sure. Didn't see I guess, him. I guess for him, that's not a good weekend. No, he finished he, fourth. So he finished fourth. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's just pretty pretty standard. It's either fourth or winning. Um, he's looking good in his techno car. If he wasn't all burnt up, I bet he probably would have finished at least second. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that had some effect on it. I think I think we're seeing these older guys struggle with these big tracks and vision. You ain't got to tell me about that, golly. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what we're seeing. And this track is this track is the biggest one; it's yeah. the farthest one away. You yeah. saw them be a lot faster at DNC in that small track, right? Uh, let me ask you this: Did DNC really count for? Yeah, it has anything? to. Thing for it what? Does. For, it's still for, it was still what? a hard race. It, it, honestly, like it, nothing against Joey or whatever. It's just the weather. It's the way it goes. But, and and actually, I'll credit Joey. He made the race happen. So all these right. people coming from all over the world, at least they got the race. But at the same time, me personally, it, it didn't really count. I mean, it's just like who? Do you, he, are you thinking who, it has asterisks? Who won that race anyways? Was it Mayfield? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just like. Mm, I couldn't watch it. It was unbearable to me. I I could really? not watch. Yeah, I really? didn't like. I it love people that liked I it. I heard though. a lot of people loved it. I thought a lot of people were like, "Yeah, you had to take different lines." I thought the racing know. was good. I thought the racing was good. Being there, watching it, I couldn't watch it. I tried. It was hard. But well, I thought the racing was good at this race, and I thought that the A man for the was most good. part. I didn't like the Joker Lane. I wish they'd get rid of it because you, it's hard to follow. Yeah, it's just hard to follow. You know, you got like so forty five minute uh, main 
Nitro Buggy main. You get four jokers. Some people didn't even use their jokers until the last like 10 minutes, you know, and it still didn't do anything for them, but you didn't know where the heck these people were really. The only thing you could do is pay attention to the top like three guys and then, you know, start doing math. All right. Well, if you add six seconds or take away six seconds, so he's got two jokers. This guy's got one joker. And you really can't tell by looking at your phone how many jokers you got to be listening to the guy. No, they the need to get an option for that. They need to get an option for that. See, right. I can see that how many they have. You can, but right. I can't. I'm right. Not, and I'm they need to phone. get, they need to have that, they need to get that put in there. So you see how many they've done. I will tell you what, I understand that. Because that was my biggest gripe. I think as a racer, it probably feels better because you have that, like, oh, I can do that. But I also think that maybe you have to, you also have to have the the fortitude to know that, hey, this guy is like 10 seconds away from me, but we're still racing for position. So now as a racer, not only do you got to do everything that you got to do, but now you got to also do math. Oh, well, you pick the idols. You pick the idols. <laughs> Somebody does. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll be honest. It's cool. It's a gimmick. Look, it's no different from a wall ride. Or so, a do, okay, jump. here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. Does the Joker lane take away from the performance of some of these guys because it's a Joker lane? Or do you yeah, think they... it's not? It's, it, it's just not. So it's psycho. So psycho can do whatever they want because right. it's a psychotic event. So sure, let's throw in all kinds of crazy stuff. But me personally, just trying to watch the race, and I, I, I don't like the Joker Lane. I just don't okay. like it. It's just, um, but I understand that. I understand that because that was my biggest gripe watching it. Yeah, but it's I think what has to happen friend. is, yeah, they need to because it's hard to keep. If it's just one, like qualifiers, you can keep track of. It's one, right? Right. But when you get up to multiples, it gets difficult, and that's where I think in the software, and I, I know that they were talking about it, but because it's just one race, they have to have the um like a tracker there so you, mm-hmm. you know so well, how, even about the, it, how about the people watching at home well we're able to wonder so, what wonder what they think you know do they like maybe. the joker lane or do they not like the joker lane I'm, we need to find I out haven't watched psycho at home all right so everyone in this podcast that's listening why don't you leave a comment below do you like the joker lane or do you not like the joker lane is it that's easier to watch or is it not let us know below when I was calling it, I always tried to say each driver and how many lanes, joker lanes they had left as well. Because I had you, I have the ability to see that, how many they have, right? And I know how difficult that would be because that was my biggest problem with that. Um, I, I would wonder, like, I, I well, I'll, I'll have Tebow on, I think, her shortly. And I'm going to ask him as a racer how he felt about it, you know, if he liked it or not. And what he feels about it, but I what I do like about it I'd like is the the suspense. What are they going to do? Is this person going to? Because I, like I think in Mason Fuller's uh, truggy main, didn't he like wait? Or one of his things, he just like in one of his qualifiers, he, he, that he was, was exciting to me. That no, part was exciting. Actually, no, Mason, I believe used the, the um, he 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 was one of the few guys in the truggy main that used his jokers later on. Right. So, so we are the, we're calculating doing algebra every lap trying to be like, all right, where's this guy at? And all of a sudden, but, you know, he finally uses them. Then we could finally, finally <laughs> visually follow the race. Right. Right. I understand that. But when I was calling it, it was exciting because we, we was able to, we was able to see it because we're, you know, we have all this stuff there to see it. So we're trying to call it. It adds that. Will he come in for the joker lane? This is the mm-hmm. pros of it. This is what it adds. Will he come into the joker lane? Will this person follow him into pits? You know, it's like, if I was one of these guys, I would have faked like I was coming into the joker lane. <laughs> or like, you know, or what? faked like I was going to go down her and just, I would have done that. I would have done something like that. <laughs> I would have taken the joker lane every single time and been like, you would have been disqualified. Yeah. You would have been disqualified. You would have well, been heavily still, disqualified. it had been funny. Uh... <laughs> You would have parked it on this on this on the straightaway like that guy did for NASCAR the other day. I didn't see that. The guy parked it. They said, "Oh, you got a black flag," and he parked oh, it on this. He's like, "All right, well." He just parked it on the start finish <laughs> line and walked <laughs> away. That guy? I don't know, but he's yeah, a legend. That's awesome. I like that. That's legend. So, <laughs> I love that shit. <laughs> hey, so I understand your gripe, but 
I tell you what, for storyline wise, it made for excitement on that side. Did like, it. will they take this and that stuff? And All oh, right. this person took their thing, and like everybody follows them. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That side made it exciting. Well, I wasn't watching the stream hardly right. at all, anyways. Let's so, talk about that uh, live RC coverage real quick. Well, let's talk about it. Have um, you watched any since you got him? No. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Very, let's say 10 minutes. Um, okay. Look, way better on YouTube. They did a very good um, job. Clear, clean, everything. Um, but when I was watching it on live RC, it's terrible. I have no idea what's going on with that. I never watch it on live RC. I, I watch just, it on YouTube. I don't think they have like they're not trying to push like the power it takes to push a high stream or a high definition stream through their website where then they can easily. You got do so much reach, YouTube. more reach on YouTube and yeah. Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so I, I just see a lot of complaints in the comment section through live RC. Um, I was on live RC all weekend because I was looking, you know, going back and forth. You know, when were people racing? You know. Um, so I'd look at the video and then kind of read the comments sometimes and people are keep griping about it on live RC and uh, live RC would comment, Hey, just go to the YouTube page and it's going to be a lot more clear. Yeah. And that's where everybody watched this on the YouTube. I mean, that's the chat that we monitor mostly. There were some people in Facebook, but not as much as YouTube. I think uh, they had like 1500 at one point watching on YouTube. Yeah. And that's also something that's fun on the commentary side, interacting with that crowd because right. like my I'm thinking like I want to make the best show for people at home because I want these people to feel like they're her, right? Mm -hmm. Like the same I would want to feel. So uh we I think I think uh me and Scotty did a good job. There's uh and I think Live RC did a good they had multiple cameras, so they had the two cameramen. They had Travis and the other dude. And then they had uh, static cams are on. They had a great cam on the straightaway, which I thought was great. Which did get taken out a couple of times. <laughs> and um, they had a uh, the pit lane cam was good too, which did get taken out as well. They did not have a, a pit lane ticker at this time, but I think that's more to do with uh, the race, not them. So I thought that that coverage was people at home seemed to enjoy it. I think uh, they enjoyed that part of it. I know, like the one, I one camera coming off the when the leap of faith, like the onside, was a little fuzzy. I don't know what was up with that, but it just wasn't. It, you could see the car, but it wasn't the best. So that was the one off camera, but I thought that was great. Um, and yeah, I thought they did a good job. They, you know, we we tried to get on and get interviews from people. You know, I wanted to do more of that, and. I don't know, maybe if, if I do work with RC Racing, I'm oh, sorry, RC Racing TV, which I have worked with, but if I do work with uh, Live RC again, I would definitely push for more of that and more of getting on and uh, among the people. Because that's, if I go, like, that's my strong point. Like, you know, being out and, uh, and out about around people. Being and, with the people. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I really enjoy the commentating. But when you do these type of races, you don't get out that much. And so when I did get out, it was like, oh, you know, this person wants to talk to me. And I ended up talking to like Matt from Techno for, mm -hmm. for a long time because that's another thing I want to talk about in a bit, the buzz for Roar. But I love getting out and talking to people. Yeah. And I know that so, for some people, for me, like when you have that, like that's what I want to bring. People at home want that atmosphere too. And I think that also puts some spotlight on the people that are there that, you know, pay the bills. Well, and, and support so, what I do and support what we do. Like we wouldn't have without the without these people, we won't have these pro classes. So yeah. you know, and you can only watch these cars go around a track so many times. You know, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you want to know who's who's behind that car, who's driving that thing. Let's let's talk to them. What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's get yeah. to know you just I a agree. little bit. You know, because it's about the people too. You know, it is the people. It is the people, and that's that's you know, like this is my. These these people that are out there that come up and like it's it's so many people that will come up and say, Hey man, I listen to your stuff while I'm wrenching and this and that and that. And I'm just like I'm still like blown away by it all. And I'm just like, man, I could I just want to sit there and talk to all of them. You know, you I want to talk to everybody. Yeah. And you know, obviously when I do these type of events, it's not possible. But yeah, I my my way of talking to them is probably getting up there and doing this walkabouts. Yep. You know, and and putting some spotlight on that on that person, and maybe his friends are watching that at home, 
and I'm like, hey, he was on this, and you know, that's I, I think that that's one of the good things of our our sport versus slash, slash hobby is that you can do that. You know, you can't do that at any other type of sport. Yep. So I hope if. I, I think that live RC, you can see that like they they definitely put a lot more effort and they put a lot more effort into the recent Raw Nationals as well, like the corporate owner Nationals, where they send two people. So, yeah, I mean, if I, yeah, I, I'll be honest, man. Like they they know their shit. Like they, I've worked now with uh two of the best. I would say I've worked with RC Racing TV and Nick Damon, who I think is excellent, and he has his style, and I like his style as well and i've worked with now worked with live rc for one race and watch them and scotty style i think we we complement each other as well because you know commentating is you have to be kind of in tune with the person and you, you're sitting there for hours talking about stuff and you can't talk about rc and the race and all that stuff the entire time so you start talking about things and scotty and i are a little bit closer in age so when he talks about well, he's obviously, he's older than me, but I mean, some of the stuff he talks about in RC, I remember reading about it in magazines and stuff like that. So I can, I can think about that. But yeah, when I'm doing these streams, I've learned, I'm just, I think as the more I do, the more I work with people like working with Danny and stuff like that and all that there, I am learning from each person that I go to and I'm learning what works. I'm learning my own style of doing things, my own style of, probably interviewing people, interacting with people, my own style of playing a color role, because I am not a RD. I am not a, that's a completely different role. I am not a play-by-play caller per se. I can talk, I can do it, but it's not my forte. I'm a caller guy, and I like that. And I'm cool with playing backup and doing that and getting out there and talking to the people. And yeah, I hope that we can do that more, you know, and or whatever. Like, I just, I thought that was good. But I, the coverage wise, I thought it was great. I thought they stepped up. I thought they did a good job. Uh, I'm not just saying that because I was a part of it, you know, but even just everything, like a lot of people, like I saw Danny out there, even though he wasn't working with Live RC, he was working with Dave. He was out there taking pictures and Jacob was out there taking pictures and there's like thousands of pictures as these guys are going through to put up. So these people were busy and they were out there taking video and all that type of stuff. So yeah, I don't know. People at home, let us know what you thought about the coverage. If you liked it, uh, if you think they stepped it up. Maybe some of the things that you want to see different, uh, because I think that's how we improve it, right? We 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 we, we try to listen and and do things and make it better for the next time. Um, something that we didn't put in the notes. So, oh, hold on. Before we go on, let's finish off with Prime Pro Nitro Buggy. Brandon Rose, super impressive in third place. Super good for him. Boost his confidence. Mason Fuller obviously puts on a race race. Comes second. I really thought he's going to do it, but then when you see Fan going out there. It's hard to beat Fan. Hard to beat that guy. Hard to beat Fan. It's going to be very hard for these guys to beat Fan. I feel somebody's going to do. Okay, Mayfield beats. So we should say Mayfield and Fan, right? But I think Fan is starting to just get that edge, and he's his edge is youth. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. You that's know, and that's something that Mayfield can't compete with. He They're cannot both get on an uh, even level right now when it comes to skill. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know how much longer Mayfield can keep getting better. <laughs> I mean, that dude's been kicking butt, but I mean, eventually. But Fenn can get better. Yes, Fenn can keep getting better just because of youth. Now, Mayfield, eventually, he's got to, age has got to catch up to him mm-hmm. sometime. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> at some point. At some think- point, you know. And so then, we'll not to, then, then that's not even. We got the Fullers. We got the we got the Brandon Rose is legitimate. Seth and Dana looking good this weekend. Um, who else? Just that's, I'm gonna go through a people, a couple of people that impressed me this weekend in Pro Nitro buggy. Uh, so look, uh, Brandon Rose impressive. Tater Sontag, yeah, Tater, huh. mm-hmm. silently being good. Just Kaden, silent, yep, silent assassin right there. Tater, Caden Fuller six. So look, we had. We had Dakota Fenn, 27, Mason Fuller, 17, Brandon Rose, 18, 19, Mayfield, 35, Taylor Sontag, 16, Caden Fuller, 15. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Lutz had a seventh. Uh, maybe not the result that he wanted, but I thought that was good. Eighth, not the result that Bornhorst wants. Wiggins, ninth. I think that's, eh, okay. He was he looked good all weekend. Tenth for Drake. That's good for him. Tebow, 11th. Not what I expected from Tebow. Um, I don't. I, I, I can't say because I 
didn't really watch much of. That's the other thing. When you're in there, you, you don't, you're not able to watch everybody's call. You're watching what's on the screen. So when I did watch him, it, it was very few. Uh, I don't know what happened this race. Tebow? Uh, yeah. I Let's don't know. Let's talk about Tebow. Let, well, let's talk about him. Retirement. They had a great sh- great thing for him at the race, too. Did they know? Did Tebow know that they were doing that retirement thing for him? Essentially, putting that uh, gravestone, making it uh, permanent. No, I don't think he knew. <laughs> he did it that. But I thought it was a great gesture. It was a good gesture. If Tebow could go back and not announce his retirement, would he do it? Do you think he had second thoughts when he saw that? Yes. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> I was thinking that the whole time. I was like, did did they did they uh, talk to Tebow about this beforehand? <laughs> no, yes. no, no, no. But I think, do you mean like when he I watched that? I don't think Tebow really wants to retire. <laughs> I'm going to have him on her. fire in him. I'm gonna have him on her uh, next week, and I'm gonna find out more about that. Yeah, we need to we need to find out more, Keenan. Because when I see that, right? When I see when I saw that, which was a which was a very touching tribute. Uh, well done to everybody that put that together. It, it was great, but it I also was like finalized I, it. Yeah, you know, it was like, all right, there you go, you're retired now, buddy. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> look, Tom Brady retired twice. True. True. <laughs> so. So I, I I like Tebow as my boy, but I, I just think it's very hard. I think nobody he's had a twenty three year old twenty three year career. He's mm-hmm. won like when they lift listed off the amount of races that you won, but when you sit there and you see that it's like oh it's that's like oh this is really happening. It's final. <laughs> well, uh, I ain't got nowhere to go now. <laughs> I would be like, I would be like, oh, maybe I don't want to quit. No, you yeah, know right. what I mean? I know. That's what I was thinking. But it was great. It was a really good touching it, thing. It was. It I'm going to have it more next week. for them to do that. Yes. Yes. Um, but I, I was just like, I was just like, ah. It's man, like this final, really finalizes it. it, you know? Yeah. It's like, he really <laughs> no is going retired. back. <laughs> well, it's, you can always there, come back. There is. Yeah. Right. But I'm, you know, I'm just trying to be funny about it. <laughs> it was. But I feel like. It's like when you see that and you look back on your career, you're just like, "Do I, am I ready to walk away yeah, from this?" Yeah, right, right. Because that kind of puts it all in front of you. Yeah, it was a great video. It was a great yeah. video. He went up there, not his best race, and he's not happy about that. But uh, that's how it goes, you know. There's there's fucking a lot of fucking fast guys out there, man. Hey, look, and, and these guys, these older guys, they have been around forever. I can't believe they keep doing it. I'm like. How these guys that are all middle age, borderline forty, still dominate? You know, like uh, Mayfield and, and Tebow, Cav. You know, he's kind of falling off a little bit, but still, he's he's there, grinding away. Like I, I've been waiting for this younger generation to step up, and they're having a really hard time doing it. Now they're slowly chipping away. They're getting yeah, there. I would agree with you. They're, it's not far away, but it's just like, Lord mercy. This is the only sport you can just go into your mid 40s <laughs> and still just kick ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, they're still a little bit away from 40. Well, I think, yeah. um, I think it's, I think that these, like, it comes back. I think these older guys, these older racers, they're going to struggle on these bigger tracks. Yeah. And especially a track like this, which is indoors, and when you're out there, yeah, well, glasses. Get some of those Mayfield Mayfield style glasses. Looking at some of these bad boys right here. All right, but let's talk about Venus. I forgot about this. Let's talk about drivers that were not there. So we didn't have Ty Testman, who went to a 10 scale race, which I kind of knew he was going to. We cool. had Cap. All right, yep, we're going to get to that. We had nope. Cavallari. Cavallari. Who, I think Cavallari, uh, his daughter, his like his new daughter, her first birthday. So. That's what I was told. So How many kids you got? She's got two. Okay. So this is her first birthday. So I understand oh, wanting yeah. to be him for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I think the biggest shock was the the beast <laughs> from the east, the people's champ, Cole Ogden. And when Cole I Ogden. asked what happened, I heard he's boycotting Dave or something like that. Yeah, I think I think Dave hurt his feelings a little bit at some point. I think point. they got in after SIC or something. I heard some stories or whatever. So, you know, Cole just needs to put some ice on his <laughs> and come on back. He's going to be mad at you. He's going to be mad at you. He's going to be mad at you. <laughs> nah, he'll respect me for that. <laughs> um, it, 
I must admit, like it's it's weird not having Cole at this race. It was weird. Yeah, he'll be back. Yeah. Cole you know. Ogden, he's a southeast guy. He just had to make a point. I think so. He'll be back. Um, also for impressive in this, I have to give him some props. Cole Caston, man. Gotta give Cole Caston some props. Uh Southeast Georgia racer. Been putting in a lot of work in his Southeast race. Good to see him making some mains. Uh, he he looked pretty good all weekend. You know, I really like his dad. He's Cole's very quiet. Doesn't say much. And I talk more to his dad than anybody. Didn't he move uh, from like the West Coast or something? I have no idea, but I believe they are from. They live in Georgia. Yeah, I I don't know him very well. I, I've heard the name. I've, very nice people. Yeah. He came uh, in twelfth, and then uh, Seth and Dana, like I said, not techno, not having. Not 13, not having the best Nitro Buggy uh, finish. Evan Vale bumping up from the B-Main to to finish 14th. Vale broke. He TQ'd his B-Main of um, Nitro Truggy and broke in the first lap of practice. Yes, I saw that. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> Good job, Vale. <laughs> uh, but he did, make the, he did make the big show. And he did. He finished. And then Spencer Hackert, who finished, he started 8th, finished 15th. Not happy about that. Rivkin, who started second and finished sixteenth, he'd not yeah. be happy about that. No. Spinrad making another main. Uh, Lee Setzer not having making the main, but part, not, probably not having the race that he wanted to. And then I would say um, probably the next guy down that probably should have made this and didn't would be Tyler Jones. For what Nitro Buggy? Yes, he just missed yeah, it. He I, just it missed was it. Close. He was there. Yeah, I think he had a couple of mistakes in the B. The did Agama you buggy. Through, did you get a look at the new N one at all? I did not, but I visualized it in my head. <laughs> I, I mean, I've seen it. What a cool car, right? <laughs> it is very cool, and it's <laughs> it's very good to see it on this big jumpy USA track. I asked uh, Tyler, you know, what you know, what's going on with the car? How's it, you know? how different is it really does it feel any different he says it doesn't really feel a whole lot different from most really? buggies he's, he's driven now he did tell me he's got like a 20 hole piston in his shocks really yes of multiple size of holes um so obviously you're gonna have to be way more weird with those shocks than you would like a traditional stand-up shock system right because they're laid down mm-hmm. um but yeah, like I, I'm really interested because when it comes to innovation in RC, there's not a whole lot that makes just big, big steps, right? You know, it's, right. it's very small, minute things. You you change angle here. But this is whatever. completely different, right? So different, so innovative. Uh, it's almost like that uh, paper filter from Clinic RC that you know it's hit and miss, but it was, it was very brave for them to do it. Right. Um, the Agama, dude, they. So like they've just like just separated themselves from everybody else and like we're gonna try it this way. I like that. I Very like cool, it. you know. It's really cool. I, I I didn't get a real close look at at the car, um, but I'm really interested. You know, it's, it's I am cool. interested and, in seeing and, it in more hands of regular people. Yeah, yeah, it's just cool. You know, like it, it's ballsy. It, you got to have big balls to do something like that because. It's so far from what everyone has done for so long. Half these freaking chassis just rip off each other. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just, oh, all right, that works. Let's copy that. Let's all right, that works. Let's copy that. You know, take an AE and a Mugen, and they're damn near identical. It's I ridiculous. Agree with you. It's ridiculous. I agree with you. It's good so, to see something Agama different doing that. That, that you, uh, you know, all the props in the world are these people. Uh, and this is he only had his. That. I think. Uh, Jones only had like a weekend prior on this car. Like really? he, went out, he went out to <laughs> Texas to hang out with uh, Billy at his track, and mm. it's a it's a rough track. And he went there. I think he went to like Thornhill and all that stuff. And I think Tyler Jones is kind of also doing the part time, like he works full time RC part time. Yeah. Uh, so it was good to see them. I want to see more of this car. I like it. Uh, John Hazelwood and the guys over there in the UK that are behind this, him, Mark Rumble, Lee Martin, they're really nice guys. They believe in it. And, like, I mean, over over in the UK, like, Agama has a very big following. So, so you know? such different tracks. 
you know. Right, but um, I mean, now he's on a rough track, and well, this wasn't a rough track, but now we'll see. You know, yeah. now we'll see how they work. It, and I think Tyler Jones is a, a great person, great to, driver, to try to to see where this car can go. When when people test stuff in Europe, it's not the same thing when it's I agree. being taken place in in America. It's just it's just different kind of tracks. Everything is different. The weather, the everything is different. The the surface they're messing with. Um, so what works in Europe doesn't always actually translate to America. But if you have a person who is willing to experiment with these things, they can make it happen on this side of the world as opposed to uh, the European side. I agree. I agree. And I think uh, I look forward to watching his progression with this. Yeah, I, I think Tyler Jones, you know, besides Tyler, if, if I think if if um, Seth Van Dalen could get on a gamma. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those got set the Van Dalens. They are very 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 innovative oh yeah they oh, will yeah. make Sean cars loves all that stuff. they will they will do mm-hmm. some stuff um and i think that's kind of what the gamma car would require is the people who can think outside of the box okay um all right so enough of us geeking out on that i thought that was a good race uh dakota fan somebody's gonna beat this guy i guess the next race we'll see all these guys race that i know they're having a nats warm-up i'm not sure if everybody's going but we'll probably see all these guys at Silver State. Uh, I know there's yeah. a few uh, Europeans coming. We're going to see the Killick brothers there. They're coming oh, for the okay. first time to America. It's going to be interesting. I know right. like a few of like Elliot Boots. I think Juan Carlos Canas is coming. We're going to see this young, fast guy from Australia come named Alex Bernardzek, who my, these Australian guys have been talking about. He's been meeting Kyle uh, McBride down there in Australia. He's an associate driver, first time to America. So that's going to be good to see. But I mean, it's I think we're going to see this is this like this is going to be one of Fenn's weaknesses. Like, you know, this is going to be a really rough track, I think. And but I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think Fenn could do it anywhere, to All be right. honest. So who's who's gonna make their mark, the Killix or the Fullers? That's that's well, that's a good interesting question. We're gonna see two sets of brothers go at it. Her very shortly. Which one uh, in America? So, Make the call. I I cannot go against the. Who do you think in the next worlds? Who's going to make the bigger impact? The well, it depends where the world is. Killix. Who cares? Just just make a call. I think we'll get one from each. I think the Fullers. I think we'll get one from each. <clears throat> well, yeah, yeah. I think I I, I think there'll be a really really close, almost like splitting hairs. Uh, yeah, I guess it does depend on where it's going to be at, doesn't it? Yeah, from what I heard, it's going to be Brazil. So, yeah, well, it's supposed to go to Brazil. It's supposed to go to Brazil. No, trust me. Next, Didn't they it's try be, that before? And everyone's like, yeah, but it's going to be right in this. It's going to be right in Sao Paulo. It's a city, twenty-two minutes. That's where we was, like in uh, when we went there. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the Kilix on a, a track like this in America. They are. Uh, they are making moves for sure. Oh yeah, they it, were. It, it's such a close comparison, isn't it? Well, between the Fullers and the Killicks, I would say so. I think that uh, both of all four of those young guys and the other ones that are coming up behind them are on the cusp of a, the next evolution of driving. They, they're just doing it. Fee is the next evolution of driving, right? But I mean, he's a part of that. That's what I'm talking about. But these guys, <laughs> these guys are what I, I say it over and over. Like I'm what I watch the Killix, I watch Fullers, I watch like the Parentes and all that stuff, and us the worlds and what they're doing with these cars. They're just doing it. They, I don't think they know what they're doing yet. But once they figure out what they're doing, uh, yeah, it's 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 gonna be these guys are gonna have to catch up. Mm. Uh, one thing we need to touch on the jump competition. That we had on the leap of faith. It was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool. I think uh, I like the long jump. I, um, we didn't have it this year, but I thought one thing I wanted to say about it was it was pretty cool to her. Adam Drake and Bornhorst like kids up there, like oh, you should do a backflip and turn it this way so it does this. And I'm like, all this RC that you guys do, and you're still up here geeking out over jumping off big jumps. All those pros, they are hardcore RC they enthusiasts. Are. They they like RC in general. Um, I, I, every pro that I've gotten to know just a little bit, they love RC. It's not just eight scale racing or whatever. They just like RC stuff. Hey, they were like, 
Drake put truggy tires on his car. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and then it's good to see streetcar Traxxas. I know. Was it? I don't even remember what it Some was. Some Traxxas like some sort of streetcar Traxxas. But it did a whole junk. bunch of twists and turns. It. I thought that should have won. I don't know who actually won. It didn't but... drive away. Apparently. Oh, well, it should have. So, it's still so, one in my book. Yeah, I thought that was fun. I, I was a little bit nervous, at, like DJ and that. I've never done anything. Like, I talk for a living, but I haven't really talked in front of people like that. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so it was fun. I thought, I, I will be honest with you, man. I, I think uh, I said it in the beginning, this trip was good for me. Like, in a certain way, like, it was good for my soul, RC soul. I needed to be around my people, yeah. which I consider, like, my extended RC family and be around some nitro racing see some good racing on a big track and i'm i'm really i'm really glad i got the, i got to go i really glad i want to um i would like to thank live rc for having me there i like to thank dave and the guys for welcoming me there as well and you know it was great to see you and brad and all my friends are all in my Aklo guys like tony and jason and guys i haven't seen for a while meet new people that uh support the podcast and just you know we're it was just great to do that, and I almost forgot. I almost forgot. There is a great, positive, very great, positive buzz and vibe going on right now about Raw. Yes. I heard this from multiple people. I heard this from manufacturers. Hmm. I sat down with a manufacturer for about 30 minutes talking about this. I have not seen a buzz like this about Raw in quite some time and it's good to see i had a long conversation with uh donathan uh oh, my boy zach. leads zach zach donathan, yeah. he, donathan he, and rc yeah he uh he asked me about it and he what i'd do differently and he probably wish he didn't <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i'm like don't even get me started but um uh it's funny because i didn't even talk to you about this um, but I felt, I feel, a uh, great buzz change going on with roar and on the beach RC side. Uh, I can't really speak for Brent for the most part from what I gathered. We've never been re- interested in a national event or a world's event because it, pers- we got lots of reasons why, but it just, it's not worthwhile to us. Right. I, I think Brent and Beach RC is more interested in doing a national than we've ever been now with Clayton Young coming in and, and taking care of business. Now, I'm, we're not saying anything like that, but the, I got the, that. the conversation I had, it, yeah, the conversation I had with Zach is, um, you know, we've never been interested and now we're, we're kind of interested Look, Clayton has a lot of work to do, and and he, he he's got to dig himself out of a big ass hole that he didn't even dig, but he's in it now. And Roar's got a lot of stuff they got to take care of. Um, I can't believe they're in debt and don't have money in the bank. It's ridiculous. Uh, but I have high hopes and aspirations for change, and I hope I hope there's a good governing body in america soon um hopefully it's roar because clayton can take care of business but like i i've pretty much hated roar ever since i got in this sport because I, I thought it was illegitimate um, right and now it looks like it has some sort of promise i hope it keeps going in that direction i agree man i i mean i sat down like I talked to Brent, we and I, him and I had a very good conversation. He mentioned those same things to me. I talked to some, another couple of other manufacturers who were super excited. But that's what it's going to take, right? We need right, these take. manufacturers to get behind them. They need to. Right. They need to also put money into it. We need to. I think we need to put money into it. We need to look at. Uh, Scotty brings up a good point because he says that we need to probably make more. People need to get compensated. You know what I mean? Nothing, you know, it's voluntary is great, but people should get compensated for their time. Right. And I think we need to use these. My thing is like, not only do we need to use the manufacturer's help, but we need to use these pro racers to help promote Raw as well. And that's what they're looking for, in my opinion. Everybody needs incentive. Mm-hmm. A Roar member needs incentive to be a Roar member. 
from the very bottom. The roar doesn't exist if it isn't for the members, right? Exactly. People are only members to, to do a national race or whatever. There's not mm-hmm. a whole lot of reasons for people to become a roar member, you know, up until recently, right? Right. Um, roar should have just about 75% of tracks on board to their program, which means that all those racers for those 75% of tracks in America are also on board to the program. This mm-hmm. is how a good organizational body can exist. Any motorsport in this country is, is under some sort of legitimate governing body organization. I'm not talking about RC. I'm talking about every other motorsport in America, the AMA or, or dirt, you know, whatever on road, off road, go karting. There's, there's, there's organizations that are respectable and you want to be part of it. You have to be part of it, to participate. And that's where roar eventually needs to be. I want to be a roar member, but I first need to have a reason to mm-hmm. become a roar member. I'm not going to sign up to some organizational body that is in debt. I want an organizational body that has money in the bank and can freaking take care of my needs and make sure I'm an insured racer or a licensed racer. Make sure my, my track, my local track is a, is a track that's under an organizational body that is covered for worst case scenario situations. You know, that's how roar needs to be. Hopefully it'll get there. Um, and we, we all need incentives. A pro needs to be incentivized to be part of Roar. Everyone needs to want to be part of Roar, not hey, I got to sign up to be Roar because I want to race in this one. National, you want to be a, you? It, yeah. should, it will bring some pride to RC. Yeah. And let's make you know what I mean. Let's make the nationals great again by qualifying to get to the nationals. I agree. Even if we piggyback off some of these races, yes, yeah. Look, qualify to be in a national, not. I'm going to get on the internet and be the first 300 people to sign up to be a national. It's it's stupid. It makes no sense. Like, I agree. All right. If I, I go on the internet when they, when they release the uh, eight scale national nitro, right. And I sign up for it on time, like before everybody else. Oh man, I, I just made the nationals guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I, I don't even belong there because if I had to race in a regional race to qualify to nationals, I wouldn't have even came close. So, also, if if raw when raw when people do get on board and things like that, we can have a real ranking system. Yes, and we can actually have a licensing system. You could have which, like a B nationals, the exactly not, so, not paid nationals, just like in Europe where there's so, the the Bs and the As. You know, you I, you have to earn your way to get to this yes, national championship by qualifying through these. Particular so, races or bees or whatever. I had this conversation for manufacturer this weekend. It was actually he was telling me about it, and he says Raw can do it. He likes the licensing system because they have a licensing system over in England in the BRCA, where you're like an F2 pilot, and then you it it That's makes right. people want to become so. So we got from oh, I just so here's what licensing and make a license system and doing all this ranking system all that stuff does. It changes the the turn from I want to get a better deal. And I yeah. want to get sponsored to, I would like to be an F1 pilot. I would like to get my F1 license. So I can get Roar. a better deal. Yeah, all that stuff. You and None of that. It's it's just, that's more attainable. Like, that's more, and it has to have some prestige to it. But it takes time. We have to, we have to it's been, it's been stripped on to nothing. And now it has to be built back up. And it's a lot so, of building to do. And but, we, but the vibe and the 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 atmosphere about it is absolutely positive. Yes, when they mess up, we're gonna have to let them know. But uh, I think we have good people, and you know what we need? We need more regional people, and we need more offered people involved. So please uh, yes. get involved. Uh, I'm doing my part. I'm not involved. I'm not a raw member, but I'm helping out my way. And I believe in what Clayton's doing, and I am a firm believer in in. Frettering uh governing bodies for RC yeah. and they should be leading in charge of what we're doing. Um, I think that's it. Oh, are you have you decided what you're gonna do? Are you going to the nationals next in June or I'm what? supposed to go to the nationals? Okay, um, which would be my first nationals I go to, not to race because I didn't qualify to get there, or I didn't get on the internet on time to register, <laughs> but 
I'm going to go there purely to enjoy it. And really, most importantly, I'm going to go there to shoot video and actually do another documentary. Great. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I'm super glad you joined me for this, this recap, uh, Lucas. Uh, I, uh, I wanted to get somebody that kind of had been to the race and I thought, wow, who will be perfect that who was watching the race, who got to talk to people, who got to see all the parts they broke and heard everybody's complaints. You, because you, I'm sure you heard it all, but you also got to watch it. So I appreciate you coming on. It's been, it's been a pleasure recapping this with you and I had a lot of fun. All right. A couple things real quick. Oh, I wanted to also say great job to all of Dave's people that did this. I thought it was great. I thought the track was great. So shout out to Bobby and track masters did a great job. It was good to see Bobby again. He came out, give me a big hug, even though he has been in a bad accident. Bobby has like the worst luck. He's always getting something wrong with him. Like, you know what I mean? Had a big accident. Yeah. Lucky to be alive. Um, and yeah. And I think, uh, shout out to Jason, man. I hope he heals up. Well, I heard he broke his leg after yeah, this. Yeah, look like up. That. Yeah. Uh, all right. Go Two ahead. Two things. Two things. Does J Concepts have an unfair Ooh, advantage? We forgot about that. We forgot about that. Yes. How could we forget about events? that? race time events. Not because they get any special privileges or anything. Just because their tires are just so much better than everybody else. Hot race is almost there. At race time events. Hot race is almost there. Look what look at B Rose this weekend. So okay. B Rose was good. Let's see. Let's go here and look at well, hot well, race. What place would a B Rose finish if he was on J Concepts? I mean, we can ask that question too. But all right. So we had I don't know. Fend. I don't know. So we had J Concepts, J Concepts, Hot Race, J Concepts, Pro Line, J Concepts, aka J Concepts, J Concepts, J Concepts, Hot Race. AKA, what is it? J, J, J Concepts is Evan exactly. Vale on J Concepts or Pro Line? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think he's getting off of Pro Line, looking for a new tire deal. Possibly. All right. So definitely a lot of J Concepts are. But at these races, I've talked to people. They're like, "Look, it's just something about their rubber that this is works their that works better at race time events. It's just a southeast dirt." Uh, of course, know. they should know like, how the dirt works over here. Here's another thing, like. All right, so J Concepts got a lot of lot of uh, compounds. They got a lot of tread patterns. They find a compound and tread pattern to work just about anywhere. But what they really, honestly dominate in, and, and, and I'm not a J Con- Concept guy. I have no ties to these people whatsoever. I'm just looking at it from a, a perspective of from a guy from the outside in. Their support system in the southeast is. Uh, Exceptional Second to none. N- mm-hmm. Nobody even comes close. Of like, course, they are at every big race. They are they're at, in full force with their tents, their their truck, their supply of tires. They're there to support their drivers a hundred percent all the time. I don't see Proline there. Proline's huge. Not not on the East Coast. On the West maybe Coast, not, maybe maybe on the West Coast. Yeah, that's um, where J Concepts isn't. That's the difference. Yeah. So. so. The, over Coast there, they don't have that support network that they have her. Mm-hmm. It's starting to get there with Drake being involved there, like mm-hmm. in SoCal. But yeah, I know what you mean. And yeah, it's all like, let's be honest. If you, J Concepts is the tire to be on in these indoor races at race time entertainment it's races. what it is. Unfor- you know, it is what it is. They it's have like- the magic, they have the magic compound and, and tire. And they are, this is their home turf. And that's how magic. it should be. Mm-hmm. So, right. but Hot Race is coming. But. They're making moves. They're making yeah. moves. They're making we'll moves. We'll see where it goes. There are a crap ton of small tire manufacturers. They just released another one today. As this morning, <laughs> I was recording this. Hey, so. More power to them, you know. That's a, that's something right. we should tackle in the next podcast yeah. we got together. All is the is the one eight scale tire market too saturated? Saturated. Lord of mercy. Hey, you know what? Very much. For, the, for the average Joes, no, it's not because we need better prices on tires. Got right. it. Hey, what else did you have? Last thing. All right, I want to give uh, Mark San Maria a big congratulations oh, yes, yes. to that hundred thousand, that hundred thousand yeah. subscribers. He's been working his ass off for about five years, I think. Um, awesome. Something the most mind blowing thing <laughs> of all, Psycho. <clears throat> Katie Carmody, race like a girl. Um, 
I, you know, I pay, I'm, I'm subscribed. She has, to two, her. she has a lot of subscribers. Uh, she went from probably about 500 subscribers to 200 and about 50,000. Yep. Yep. I checked it the other day. Subscribers in a matter of months. <laughs> <laughs> race like a girl youtube channel if you haven't checked her out yet which you probably have you need to go check her out because she's, she's doing legendary stuff it's what people youtubers talk about as legendary to get a quarter million subscribers in a matter of months is just freaking mind-blowing like i'm i'm in awe i checked that channel the other day it's like 265,000 <laughs> subs she literally like, had 500 subscribers just a few months ago. So if you're listening to this podcast, you might want to go check out Katie's channel. She did have to delete some videos, but the videos she's got up there are uh, killing it. She's got one video that's got 200 million <laughs> views or something. I think it's our uh, pit one, our pit ones. Yeah. It, you know, and you know she's got a pit bit, stop video. She's been on Super Blondie. She's yep, been she's on Super been Blondie and a couple I've other seen things. other major uh, influencers who actually uh, showcase their videos as well. It's unbelievable. I just I got had to say I, something about it. I, I've never I been just, as mind blown as that. That like I can't believe it. it's crazy. It's, it's you know what? And you know what? I just I just want all that all that content. Those little shorts that that short of her refueling. It just means more eyes on what we do. And that's it, all I get, care about. Let's get 10% of those 250,000 subscribers to get into RC. Oh, it would change Boom. the whole entire racing. RC racing. What it would that? change the entire. 25,000 people, right? That would It would change RC completely. Completely. Yeah. Racing. Completely. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Awesome. And also, she, they have very good. Uh, speaking of Carmandy and Race Girl, they have a very good Future Stars of RC initiative that. I think that many other tracks should talk to them about implementing in their tracks because yeah. at their tracks because it's a very good uh, incentive and they they make a huge difference uh, in in this area in the RC community they do a lot of awesome things the Carmonies do yep. and um, you know congratulations to David and and Katie uh, it's just awesome I'm like I'm in awe of it honestly yeah. good people that that like just part of my like good friends i like to see them every race we we always say like me them uh it's it's like them marlo dj bobo when is around and we were like oh we'll I'll go out to dinner we did it once but we haven't did it since so i need to go out to dinner with them one race when i get when i get to a race yeah and um uh and you guys have a race coming up uh spring sting spring sting should be in two weeks okay okay at, at badlands at badlands yep yep okay yep. cool cool should be cool. fun uh, last year we got like 150 entries, so hopefully we'll get 150 entries again, and we'll have a good time and and party a little bit. I'm sure. Are you racing or just working? I ain't got a car to race, Keenan. Well, so time to fix that. I I, I was talking. You work at a hobby shop. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for some uh, manufacturers to step up and give me some free shit, so I could sell their product a little more. But no one stepped up, so. You know what? We need to get you Whatever. YouTube. I'm just we need to get that BTRC and... YouTube going. <laughs> Hit the sub yeah. buttons. Uh, yeah. Keep yeah. going. He's got a really great documentary uh, yeah. that I think is well done. Great job on that. Uh, Thank you. I think it should definitely have a lot more views than that it should. But that's, that's all why I haven't done anything since. Yeah, you know, like uh, blew my load and I didn't get much in return. So uh, I've been taking a nice long break, and I'm gonna come back stronger. And it'd be awesome. Whatever videos I make, they're gonna be sweet. But you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, pick my poison and do it properly. Sweet. All right, Lucas. Well, thank you for your time. It was a pleasure recording with you. Uh, keep up the good work at BTRC. And um, yeah, I look forward to your next bunch of content. And enjoy RC and get yourself a car for Springsteen. Okay. If anyone wants to give me some free shit, let me know. Yeah, hit him up, Lucas Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Lauren on 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 Facebook. Yeah, and check me. out the Beach RC YouTube and yeah, hit that freaking like out. and notification button, people. That's right. Yeah, especially on that uh that those documentaries. Very good spotlight on very young races and yeah. female races too. And one a right. good family race as well. So very good. All right, Lucas. I'm gonna talk to you later, man. You have a good weekend. Thank you. Good again. Easter. You too. Bye bye.
And thank you to Clinic RC and uh, for their continued support. If you want to get more information about their race tech engines, check them out at clinicrc.com. Thank you to Tony and Vicky for all their support. And thus ends our podcast, everybody. Thank you to Lucas for his time, for coming on. It was a great chat. It, it was good to have him on. <laughs> I think Lucas had a lot of fun as well. So maybe we'll see him on for some more uh, recaps and stuff as he goes through races. Uh, also, thank you once again to Brandon Rody, Live RC, Scotty, and everybody involved there. Thank you to uh, Dave Lycom, Race Time Entertainment, Bobby Moore, and everybody for having me there uh at the at the race it was good to be there it was good to see lance mcdonald uh as well as danny as well and just good to see everybody there man thank you to everybody that showed myself some love showed the podcast some love uh, i greatly appreciate that thank you to my good buddy mike hill and his wife Heather, for having me there as well because i flew into charlotte spent a, uh and he drove me up and then i spent a night there coming back uh it was really good to hang out with my friend my good buddy, another road trip in the books for us. We've been on a, quite a few road trips together. So that was fun. And yeah, just congratulations to all the winners. Dakota Fens on fire. Mason Fuller's looking good. Congratulations to Brandon Rose. And uh, I look forward to Silver State. This is the next race we're going to see a lot of these guys compete at. So yeah, it's going to be great. I look forward to Carpet Nats. I look forward to Philippine Masters, North Georgia Shootout. Oh man, the list does not stop. But once again, it was great to be out there in my environment, around the people, smelling nitro, in, in in just in my happy place, which is the track. And honestly, without you guys' support, none of this is possible. So thank you to everybody around the world for the support of the NNRC and helping us grow. And hopefully you'll see me at a few more races this year. I'll be in Portugal. Can't wait. And maybe I'll get to some more races this year. But I still need you guys out there to hit that notification button, hit that sub button, hit that like or dislike button, leave a comment, share, follow us on all our socials, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube, Facebook, so follow us there. If you're listening to the podcast on an audio only format, please leave a review. Sure, it helps us out. We need to get the podcast out there growing out in the algorithm. Boom, boom, boom. Let's help grow RC. Congratulations to Mark Santa Maria on 100K. Very good for him. Super pumped for him. And uh, yeah, thank you to everybody that shared me some love. Uh, thank you to all of the patrons of the NNRC. Can't do without you guys' support. Uh, if you wish to be a patron, the link is in the written description of this podcast. Definitely going to be doing a, a patron-only podcast next week. Uh, shout out to the NNRC Discord. And yeah, shout out to these awesome companies that support us, man. And remember, we have uh, coupon codes, uh, written descriptions, uh, sorry, links, uh, we have some affiliate links. Some of you don't have any type of coupon codes, but you just leave a note. Uh, please go buy something from these companies. Let them know that you've heard about it on the NNRC. Uh, if you got an affiliate link, it helps us. If you if There's also some coupon codes for you to save some money. They are Invisible Speed, High Tech RC, Some Pedal USA, Sidewinder Morgan Fuels, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Clinic RC, Ignite Design RC, Bringing Gas Truck Back, Racecraft USA, Call RC, WRCE, House of RC, RCGP, shout out and thank you to our drivers, David Ranafuck, Jarrett Tebow, Robert Badier, and Alexander Hagberg. Thank you guys for all the love. Nitrous to glory. E-Buggy pays the bills. If you ain't grinding, you're sliding. E-Buggy be paying some bills in yourself too. That's not, you know. And 10 scale. Builds the skills. Lefty is out.